Bench, one man who's not on the bench, but he's on the sidelines and looking after his own publicity machine is the fly, Russell Morris. Thanks, Sandy. Yeah, I spoke to uh, Tony Lockett in the rooms. His only concern was the lack of touch because he hasn't had much uh, match football during the, the last couple of months. And Lockett, he's not too concerned about it. The only way to play Lockett is in the first, not the seconds. St Kilda, pretty relaxed. Everything's going pretty well. And as far as that badge is concerned, someone gave me the St Kilda supporter. They picked it up in the reject box at, for 50 cents, Sandy. I'm surprised they paid that much. Kelly goes up towards the half forward line. He was looking for Troy Luff. Ball spills free towards Paul Kelly again, who'd followed it down. Gets the hand pass out wide, taken by Nathan Burke, will be first to it. Ahead of uh, Chapman, or oh, high tackle. He was taken around the neck. The ball spills away over the line. It'll come back to Nathan Burke, who uh, gave away the helmet in disgust when his side was playing Brisbane up at the Gabba in the heat. He goes towards Winmar who finds Cook. The big man does well. Such an important game this one uh, for St Kilda. If they can start stringing wins together, Peckett comes wide to try and need his. He's almost down towards centre wing, goes to that area now. Troy Gray will be keen to do well against his old side. It's a big night too for Peter Philandia. He plays his 50th game. Daniels prods it and sucks up the ground. Jack Daniels, first score to the Satyrs. A good opportunist goal by Daniels, but really the heatly spoil, I think, was the critical fact as the ball came in. Uh, Ruse was underneath the flight of the ball, was going to take an uncontested mark, but Heatley made the five metres to make it a contest, brought the ball to ground, and then Daniels was able to run onto the ball and uh, kick a good soccer goal to get the scoreboard started early for St Kilda. Maybe a bonus there that Jason Daniels was able to kick it off the ground. We've seen his kicking ability in the past, but uh, he slotted that one through and uh, well done to uh, the stalwart from uh, St Kilda. They lead one goal, the Swans yet to score, so the bounce back at the centre, cook up high, kick forward by Cripps. It lands that centre half forward. Ruse couldn't quite take it. That's Nick's number 23 for the Swans, and of course, a well-known player, number 23 for the Saints, Stuart Lowe over the top. The ball at centre-half forward for St Kilda. Who'd you pick tonight, Robbo? I think St Kilda will win. Lee? I've got it for the Saints as well. Home state advantage is my philosophy these days. Yeah, you wonder, don't you, sometimes? I mean, it's a bit of an embarrassment sometimes trying to tip winners, Sandy. But anyway, we have a go at it. Tryonides trying to break clear. Everett there. Tryonides once again. And a fairly healthy interception there by Dale Lewis. I thought Rob Lee might have changed his philosophy last week after uh, he picked against Fort Power. I've changed that Football philosophy, Park. Sandy. <laughs> I did read all that logic in the paper, Sandy, and uh, congratulations, Lee, and good luck in the tipping competitions. <laughs> but anyway, we're here tonight, and I think we'll see a fairly even contest. Chance here for Joel Smith. His kick smothered off the boot. And a battle there for Cook. He couldn't quite control it. So we'll have a boundary throw in about 30 metres around from the St Kilda goal. Interesting choice of matchups by uh, by the Swans. Ruse is back on Everett, virtually on the full back line, and Dunkley is picking up low, low playing centre half forward to start the game. Dale Lewis flicks it inside towards Creswell, who goes across goal, finds Seymour. Brad Seymour on the last line fence wants Ruse, but look out. Rimmar was there, Creswell soccer's wide, Ruse may see it towards the boundary line, no, Lachlan is there with him, he's got a ton of pace, but Ruse, casual as you like, floats it over the top towards Creswell, just gained 15 to 20 metres, careful boys. Oh, throw in on the outer side. Saw better in the English pace it said. <laughs> Good film. It was terrific, and they won a few Academy Awards with it too. Here's Brett Cook wearing 42. Turn those numbers round, and that's what he turns today. It's his 24th birthday. Up against uh, Stafford. Dyson back in the Sydney lineup, wearing 12. Playing his 95th game, so a major milestone coming his way in the not too distant future if all things go according to plan. Cook and Stafford once again. Stafford may have given away a free kick then, taking uh, young Cripps high. In fact, that's how the umpire has seen it. So he plays on. St Kilda doing all the early attacking now. Goes towards Everett. He's got a height advantage over Ruse. Trinidis tries to lock it up. He's unsuccessful. The Sydney defence finding out all of our pressure early on as the kick from Shannon Grant comes wide. Locked up, taken by Luff. 
Turns in a 360, gives it away to Low. He's under pressure, but he wobbles it down towards the forward pocket. Kick back by Duckley towards the half-back flank. And the mark is taken there safely by Stewie Maxfield. The former Tiger looks towards uh, centre wing. Lewis leaves it for his teammate. Now it's Luff waiting down in front of the pack. Troy Luff. A chance to put Sydney deep into their attacking zone for the first time. But again, the stumbling block was Coblin initially. And it's over the line, just in Sydney's attacking zone. And there's young Ozzy Jones. Playing in his 45th game, the young man. And looking for a big one. And good luck to him in tonight's match. The Saints will be looking for some contribution from all players, you would think, because the Swans are a pretty good team. Tight net. Lewis not able to break away. G. Lowe not happy there. I really think Lewis had the footy and threw it out in front of himself, Robbo. OK, Johnny. Uh, Dale Lewis, well... We he's got, he's got the ball. He sees the tackle. Yep. That's incorrect disposal. Yep. Free kick to Stewie Lowe. So it went the other way. It went to the Swans. And Lewis backing up. Gets another crack at it. Trying to take control as Chapman. He's able to shrug the tackle. So he backed himself. It came off. And then he gave it up. Kicked it straight to the opposition. Mark taken by Cook. Cook to Burke. Gee, we're going to see two Tigerish performances here. Nathan Burke for the Saints and Paul Kelly for the Swans. Great players, both of them. Troy Gray's kick it to the centre, gives it up as well. Luff has got the football. He's just forward of the centre. He kicks it out wide. O'Loughlin there, but he leaves it for Ruse. Ruse's handball, not too bad. Back to Dyson. Doesn't kick the bad ball too bad, but he decides on a hand pass. Ruse, just a little fumble. Dyson nearly got it back again. It's a struggle for possession. Over the top there is Matthew Young. And the umpire decides on a bounce. So what, Troy Gray would be pretty happy there's a ball up over there. That kick from the back flank back into the centre square. If they go and miss, as his did, uh, your defence is completely opened up. 35 metres from the Swans goal. A ruck contest between Cook and Luff. Close to the boundary line. Winmar doing the pressuring on O'Brien. And it's another throw. Crowd has built up considerably. St Kilda, the early leaders, with a goal from Jack Daniels, who socketed it through. Nathan Burke urging his side on. Cook, Luff, Shanahan, you saw floating through the back. This is Cripps. Still Cripps. Gray's there with him. Cripps takes the kick. Back towards uh, the half-back flank. His target was uh, Joel Smith, but Shannon Graham who's also got a birthday today. He turns 20, Robbo, which I know you'll be interested in, to Troy Luff. Might be a big party on tonight somewhere. So well, one of the sides will be uh, partying on afterwards. Luff really came to the fore in the final series. Actually gave the Swans year. a pretty good year. Mm. Even though, you know, like they did, they fell down at the finish, but uh, his year was pretty good, Troy oh, Luff. He's one of the big improvers that uh, enabled the team, in fact, to improve so much. So... Sydney, their first chance to score. It is Luff kicking from a 48 metres. Pretty good looking kick, just drifting across the face and one by. So the margin five points, St Kilda's way. Winmar is going to be the designated kicker. Been in the scintillating touch, finds Peckett, pops one over the top towards Young. He better be quick. He is, he just chips away to Everett, who's down on half back. Lopes along with a left foot towards Stuart Lowe. A cry of Stewie comes from the crowd, but to no avail. It goes over the line. Luke Beveridge wearing 27. We'll see another throw in. Boys on the Sydney bench looking on. And of course, uh, Tony Lockett is also there. Peter Philandia, too, who's playing his 50th game. So uh, good luck to uh, Pete. Tonight, let's hope it goes well for him. Nathan Burke keeps it in play, but uh, straight to Andrew Dunkley. Back for his second game of the season with an unorthodox-looking style. But it's OK because he gets it across to Paul Ruse. And Ruse will chip up towards Luff territory. He's almost down towards centre wing. Shanahan's got him. Did he have him too long? No, said the umpire. Luff does well to try and flick it out. And that's effective too to Johnny Stevens. He's a great story, Stevens, but his kick dropped short and it's taken by Harvey. Gee, the pace of the game, Lee's not that cracking hot that they should be giving it up so easily. Yes, it's interesting. Uh, the, uh, the Everett duel with Ruse will be interesting. Ruse will be trying to run off at every occasion. But at the moment, both sides are turning the ball over, as you say. Jones with the football for the Swans. Good kick this time. And he 
kicks it to Smith. That one, Robbo. Stewie Maxfield wasn't in the contest for the mark. If he's not in the contest for the mark, he can't claim the play. The mark is taken. Maxfield comes in, grabs him, puts him on the deck. 50 metre penalty. Only one thing I've got to say there, John. Consistency. You, know, you see that early in the game, and then you see it for the rest of the game, there's got to be more 50 yeah. metre penalty. I must admit, Robbo, there are lots of occasions when the player claims him but doesn't put him on the ground. In theory, that should be a 50 metre penalty as well. Fair enough. But the goal has been kicked by Smith. So the Smith and Jones combination coming to the forefront here for the Saints, and they get their second goal of the game. They lead 12 to 1. Early in the game, you were waiting for all night for that one, Robbo. But yes, uh, the 50 metre penalties are, as we know, such a severe penalty. Really, uh, uh, John called it correctly. I mean, he, and probably just the buckle of the knees is a good idea, which is what Smith did try and draw the 50 metre penalty. The, the uh, player who's defending the mark has to be just so careful not to give away that 50 metres. And, uh, Maxfield did exactly that. Lee, when that rule was brought in, the instruction was that if the player claims him, the 50 should result. It doesn't have to put him on the deck. Mm. So set to go once again back in the middle. Stan Alves, who's seen the highs and lows of coaching in recent weeks. And a premiership player there for Hawthorne, I think, in years gone by. Normie Goss yeah. who's uh, with them now. Don't know what the hold-up is here. plays one. Cook can't get it effectively because he was pushed out by Stafford. So he'll take the free kick. Brett Cook looks towards half forward. The Saints dominating early. No mark taken. A chip by Beveridge in towards full forward. He's found his target at Big Stewie. That is the difference between uh, Stuart Lowe just at the moment. He's marking touch isn't quite there. I mean, he got both hands wrapped around the ball, almost took the mark, but just didn't quite hold it. The, uh, the Stuart Lowe that uh, we've seen so often would have clunked that in two hands and no spoil would have dislodged it. 12 points the margin. Shannon Grant goes short into the back pocket. It's OK. Finds his man in Matthew Nix. Nix kicks towards half back. Now Cook did well because he was pushed under the ball and still managed to hold it. So the big man will send St Kilda into the forward zone once again as Grant flies over the top. Seymour is at the back. He sees it over the line. Yes, it's a game that so far hasn't opened, Robbo, in a, in a burst of fire. In fact, the crowd also seems relatively quiet. I mean, Maybe a, a Saturday night and they're just uh, easing into it. The Crips, a high kick, straight up in the air towards Stuart Lowe. Oh, oh he's got it this time. A miraculous mark. So much opposition from one of the best defenders in the game in Dunkley. But this is one of the best forwards and arguably the best mark in the game. And that's what we come to expect. When Stuart Lowe gets both hands on the ball, really, you can do anything and that ball won't uh, dislodge. We saw him just, just not take possession that uh, previous behind, but that time he got both hands around the ball. So 15 metres out. Low for his first. He's kicked five so far this season, been a little off target, five goals, four, but he's spot on there. Flying start by St Kilda. Yes, it is a flying start and there's no breeze to speak of at all, so neither end is going to be favoured by any kind of windy conditions, so it's a great start by St Kilda. I've got to ask myself, how come Lockett's not on the ground? I mean, if he's been picked, you'd yeah. think it's starting. If he's not ready to play four full quarters, OK, give him a spell later, but uh, when the game starts, uh, if he was ready to play and fit to play, you'd think he'd be out there. Gee, what a strong man Stuart Lowe is in that uh, contest there with Dunkley, keeping his footing until he actually grasped the football. St Kilda 3-1 lead, the Swans one behind, the behind kick for the Swans by Luff, kick forward by Nathan Burke, gathered by Trionides, Trionides hand pass, Cripps, he's been prominent, he'll nearly kick a goal from here, Cripps goes for goal and kicks inaccurately by a long way in the finish, just not able to quite straighten up there, and uh, 
He's already had five kicks, Jason Cripps, plus a hand pass. And we've still got ten and a half minutes left in the first term. This is Paul Ruse for the Swans. He kicks it out wide, close to the boundary line, marking contest. Everett, about fourth in line. Ooh, O'Loughlin striving. Can't get past, and the Saints forwards working very hard to keep the ball in their scoring area, Cook and Trionides, and the ball will be bounced about 55 metres from the uh, Saints' goal. So, interestingly there, St Kilda with six tackles to one for the Swans. So, spirited performance from the Saints early. Knocked over there in the finish by Dale Lewis. Umpire gives that the all clear. We'll have a boundary throw in. You mentioned Jason Cripps. His main job is to uh, do the close checking role on Paul Kelly. Everett leading with Stafford. Everett gets a left hand to it. Winmar was floating across in front of the pack. Kelly there also with Cripps. As Rocket Ede adjusts his glasses and prepares for a night at Wakeley. Looks like he's out for a Saturday night dinner, doesn't he? Looks very relaxed. When you're three goals down, it's uh, 10 minutes into the game. I would uh, 15 minutes into the game. I'd I think you'd be a bit stressed inside. Stafford, but at the back, Orson Kilda. It's a half forward goes the kick from Smith, and Trionides is at the bottom of the pack, takes the mark. Interesting trivia uh, in the paper during the week about Jason Trionides. He actually toured with a, an Australian junior soccer team at about 13 or 14 years of age. Well, he's made the switch fairly successfully, hasn't he? Yes, he burst onto the scene in the Anset Cup last year, 1996, and uh, since then he's been in and out of the team. Uh, back in tonight. And this, to really set St Kilda on the way in the first quarter, the drop punt is away to the right. See, that is a costly miss because he was virtually directly in front uh, Stan Alves, Cat Colling and Co. Uh, yeah, Normie Goss. Or Cast of thousands. Yeah. Sees the, the oh, lead. Five or six. <laughs> Would you believe three or four? Shannon Grant to bring it back into play. Sighting young player, Shannon. But uh, it's not a good kick. It's going to be taken by Joel Smith who kicked an early goal. He's slung over the line by Matthew Nix. Just a little bit of a lull here while there's a boundary line throw in. Lee, what do you think the coaches can do or the coaching staff about set shots players missing from say 30 or 40 metres? Oh well, constant practice, correct practice. You can't uh, simulate the match pressure. That's the thing you can't simulate. Ruse does the ruck work. Smith again, hurriedly in towards full forward. There's a lot of them there. Oh, have another one off the ground, Stewie Lowe. He had a fresh air shot and eventually desperate work by Seymour. Sees it over for a rush behind. Low an opportunity there, just unable to take advantage of it. There it is, one, two goes, and great defensive work in the end by Brad Seymour. And this is 44th game, 20 points the margin. Secure will set up the defensive zone for the kickings, and just in the first couple that we've had, uh, they've uh, defended the kicking fairly well. Grant this time goes longer, and there's going to be a free kick. The advantage may be paid here towards Sydney. In fact, it's going to be so. O'Brien's away, and Sydney go in towards Troy Luff, who marks just inside 50. Still a long way from home. He wants to go on with the job. He's got Lewis streaming down in the forward line. Could have been interfered with. Troy Gray defends, and he plays on to the outer side. Gaining 40 or 50 metres, O'Loughlin leads Winmar. The boundary line beats them both for a throw in. And Sydney got the ball out of the defence then, but they were forced to kick the ball long from the kick-in, which is exactly what a zone defence is trying to achieve. On that occasion, uh, uh, Swans got the contested uh, possession, out she came. A little bit of excitement there, <laughs> eh? Michael O'Loughlin and Nicky Winmar. A bit of talent in that period. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Let's hope they can get right into this game tonight. Mooney gets onto his left foot, hacks it forward, Kelly goes straight past he and Jason Cripps at the back is Daniels, Cripps has done some good running in support and will be forced to kick very very wide it may bounce just inside the boundary line it does and over for a boundary throw in still in the Swans forward half, they're yet to kick a goal that's uh, Jason Trionides in screen seven and three quarter minutes left Trionides the uh, well the penultimate scorer at this stage and missing a set shot from about 50 metres. Ruck work. Oh, bursting through his orchard. He's kicked towards full forward. And in defence, Coughlin. 
gathered by Stevens. His debut last week was terrific. He just misses, hooks the kick a little bit too far, and it trundles over for another behind to the Swans. It's interesting, uh, Staff, Stafford is off in dro dro dropping back into defence and picking up Everett. Ruse pushing up the field to try and get a bit of run as a, a ruckman. They're kind of alternating off Everett at various situations. Tony Lockett still waits his chance on the bench. Also there we saw uh, Troy Cook, who's uh, another exciting young player, as Justin Peckett brings it back into play. He comes towards uh, centre wing. Daniels had it for a moment, then lost it through the legs of Ozzy Jones it went kept in play by Jason Mooney now he puts it out in front of Maxfield but he's beaten by the desperate Nicky Winmar well played by Winmar and uh, he receives the plaudits of this big crowd and he wants to have a bit of a chat with Stewie Maxfield it's great composure isn't it I mean he went to ground but he still kept his curl yeah. hit the ball out towards the boundary Winmar great work play goes on it's in towards the middle now. Here's Ruse who will send Sydney deep into attack once again. He's got O'Loughlin inside 50. Speaking of excitement machines, he thought about going on with it. Goes back now. And Michael O'Loughlin from 45 metres out, not an acute angle, should bring up Sydney's first goal. And Paul Ruse again. This is where a uh, uh, good mark by uh, O'Loughlin really had. Uh, could have marked it two hands but thought one was sufficient and it was uh, but this situation of Ruse being able to run around midfield that's something potentially uh, could be damaging for Securita. Here's a Lachlan. Oh it's not very pretty off the oh, it's a goal and it's a uh, oh no hang on what's it's the a goal. doing? 50 metre penalty. 50 metre yeah. penalty. 50 metre penalty for encroaching over the mark. I reckon um, the kick went over John don't you reckon? It looked as though it was a goal. Well, why wouldn't he gas the goal umpire whether it was a goal and just give it the all clear? Yeah, that, that, that's a very good question. If, normally, if the goal is scored, then the kick would stand and we'd go back and bounce it in the centre of the ground. Troy Gray's asking the question now, but uh, he's probably more concerned about the 50. Here's O'Loughlin anyway. He's going to have another shot for goal. And he does put it through for a goal. So kill the players and fans alike not at all happy and uh, somewhat confused. The, the uh, player on the mark didn't actually move so I suspect that Darren Goldspick was telling him to come back and he didn't respond. Now Darren would have told him two or three times for sure and uh, if he didn't respond then, uh, then Darren would have imposed the 50. Jason Cripps here, uh, I mentioned uh, the fact that he was playing on Kelly. Kelly's actually been shifted back onto the half back line. Well, Ruse, that kick was a good one, wasn't it, to uh, give Michael O'Loughlin the chance without changing stride to get the kick in. So back in the centre and the knockout gathered by Everett, but taken by Ruse. Ruse has had quite a few possessions already. Five, that was his sixth. The kick out wide in front of Ozzy Jones there and Mark Orchard will have a boundary throw in. You can see there St Kilda have actually effected a change there and coming onto the ground is big, bad, bustling Barry Hall. <laughs> And obviously going off is, uh, looks like Brett Cook, was it? Number th 42, I yep. think, for the Swans, maybe on the interchange bench. So with five or five and three-quarter minutes left in the term, Saints looking maybe to preserve. There's Lockett on the bench, and uh, Lee, you've already mentioned that uh, you'd like to see him on the playing field. Well, I mean, the Swans have obviously got some kind of plan how they're going to use him tonight, but... Uh you know, if you're not going to play him a full game, sometimes you think at the start of the game is not a bad time to get him on. O'Loughlin gets it to Maxfield. Maxfield goes with a high left foot centering kick in towards full forward. The only one there is a former Sydney Swan. He'll be very keen to do well tonight, Troy Gray. And maybe he still remembers those red and white colours. It could be turned over. Here's O'Loughlin. Inside 50, Michael O'Loughlin. Did he take him on? No, he gives him to Paul Ruse. Ruse shoots in towards goal and he's put it through. 17 game veteran kicks his first for the night and Sydney hit back late in this first quarter. Yeah, there's interesting this situation the way the Swans are using Ruse as I've mentioned a couple of times they're trying to get Stafford back to pick up the taller Everett as much as possible to release Ruse to be sort of run around the ground almost a tall Ruck Rovers uh, type even though he may be the designated Ruckman to use that term and that's uh, that move has got the uh, Swans back into this game in the last five ten minutes. Great start to this game by Paul Ruse. Five kicks, couple of hand passes, couple of marks, been in everything.
from the centre bounce. This is a vital time for both sides. Sydney are coming back. Kelly's going forward. They're inside 50. Oh, Lachlan will fly from behind. Ball comes to the ground. Gray is there. Johnson also working hard. And uh, the young uh, Stevens it was, John Stevens, wearing number 20, who uh, came back from a severe illness as we check the St Kilda bench. It's at the moment a case of on your bike for Mr Cook. In the meantime, back in Sydney's attacking zone. The snap is high in the wards, full forward by Jason Mooney. It's a behind. He was also a good player for the Swans last year. Yes, yeah, so, well, if you make a grand final, you've got to have a, a fair percentage of your team, even apart from the gun players of the, uh, well, not so much the also-rans, but those other players have to have good years as well. Pickett's kick in, finds Cripps. Cripps goes in towards centre-half back. The mark is taken by Harvey, and probably Robert Harvey's first clean possession gets it to Daniels. Daniels kick in towards the centre, gathered by Everett. He's just absolutely swamped. Stafford got him, and also did Matthew Nix. And just nothing happening there for the Saints. And Swans, to their advantage, have just held up that uh, promising forward move. It's on centre wing. Not that far wide of the centre, actually. You can see the uh, sponsor's logo there where the umpire is about to bounce the ball. And it's not clear by Nathan Burke. Harvey just has that magnificent ability to get away from his opposition. Kicks towards the uh, forward pocket. Beveridge knocked away. In there were also was a Trionides. The ball spills out wide now to Dunkley. Kick forward by Joel Smith. Not really all that under control, and it goes over for a boundary throw-in. Three and a half minutes left. St Kilda lead by six points. They got the first three goals of the game, and the last two have been kicked by the Swans through the agency of Michael O'Loughlin and Paul Ruse. Everett and Stafford. Stafford from behind. Gets a little touch on it. Lewis grabbed too high by Everett, you would have thought. And the umpire in a fantastic position there to make that judgment. Free kick to Lewis. Left half back for the Swans. Kicks up towards uh, centre wing, Robbo. Steaming out again was Mooney. Floats it to Maxfield. He's under pressure, but he gives it back. Oh, this is good football by Maxfield. He's a left footer. He can centre it in towards full four. Big pack of players. Now, who can take a mark? Olsen killed it. Oh, waiting down is Stevens. Goes into the open goal and misses. seen uh, pretty two diabolical errors there. Gray, both hands on the ball, uncontested mark virtually. He's dropped it, he hasn't held it. And then Stevens has ran into the open goal. I suppose the only thing he could have done is run another five moves and kick it from the goal line, but it certainly was a goal that went begging. 2-4. I reckon if I could have got on then I'd have mortgaged the house, Andy. <laughs> How could you miss from there? Oh dear. Strange things have happened. Smith and Jones, the young combination. They live and work together. Low, centre wing. Will St Kilda make them pay? Towards Trionides and Seymour. And also there, Jason Heatley. Wearing 24. With his new club. Settling in. Got amongst the goals last week. Which was good for Heatley. And St Kilda. Low wins the tap. Kick goes back towards centre wing. Seymour, Mooney I should say, keeps it in play. Now Jack Daniels is charging towards this ball. Where will it go? Off the boot. Back towards Low. The flying leaping Stewart. Low takes a fine mark and gives it away to his teammate in Joel Smith. Only to see it marked by Paul Ruse in the back pocket. Fantastic uh, body use just to prevent Hall coming any further back. Then it becomes a fairly easy mark. Big Bad Bustling Barry Hall, as Robbo knows him. I don't know why Barry Cook isn't known as Big Bad Bustling Barry Cook either, but funny how words stick on some players, isn't it, Robbo? It just sounds better with Barry Hall, Sandy. So, uh, just a couple of minutes remaining. Here's uh, that mark of Stuart Lowe again in full flight on centre wing. We're down to the penultimate minute of the first quarter, I can quote Robbo. And here's Dyson. Inside 50, and that's a strong mark by O'Brien. Positioned himself in front. He nearly kicked this, I reckon. Well, this is uh, from 50 metres. He wastes no time because there's no one in the square, and he's done exactly that, Robbo. Sydney have hit back hard. 
Craig O'Brien, that's his 172nd career goal, but more importantly, it sees Sydney hit the front. And a difficult matchup, uh, Craig O'Brien. Justin Peckett normally plays on the ground level forward. Uh, of course, O'Brien, a very good mark for not a player of uh, too much height. And really just good body use, stuck his behind out to make sure that Peckett couldn't get a loop to spoil. And a good mark from the front position and good conversion to follow. Well, quite interesting now. The um, scores have got very, very close together. Right on quarter time, Sydney now lead by a point. Dyson tackled by Stuart Lowe. Kicked clear by Cripps. Watch this fella control the football if he can get into the clear. Have a look at this. Just magnificent, Nicky Winmark. Kick may not get the distance, or it did. It went over the players, but just offline and through for one behind to St Kilda. In full flow, one of the most watchable players in the competition, Winmar. Scores a level with a minute left. Stan Elves giving the uh, stimmer roll a lovely little work out there <laughs> as Lewis kicks the Swans back outside the 50 metre area. The ball spills to the back, taken by Kelly for the Swans. Paul Kelly kicks towards the centre wing. Now he finds Stevens. He'll put that bad miss out of his mind and they go down the throat of Troy Luff and Jamie Shanahan, making sure that he's going nowhere and earning every kick that he gets. And the difference between those last couple of kickouts, uh, St Kilda allowed the ball to go over the back from the long kick in. You've got to make sure the ball gets pounced back into uh, your forward zone because once it was over the back, the Swans ran onto it and that really created the loose player possession for Luff to end up with the ball. There he is then, game number 69, 50 metres, in fact there's a free right down the ground, so again St Kilda uh, are really giving away this early advantage they had, they kicked the first three goals, and now O'Brien has banged through another one. So Craig O'Brien has two, and a little bit of confusion down that end of the ground. We might call on John. I did he, uh, Sepp, did he uh, signify a shepherd a long way from the ball? I saw Darren Goldspin with his arms outstretched as if Justin Peckett had blocked uh, O'Brien trying to lead as if he played a shepherd or something. I must admit, Lee, I didn't see the signal, but um, certainly anything that the defenders do forward of the kick at goal is going to be very, very risky given that there's an umpire sitting down there just watching for that sort of stuff. Looking at the replay, I think Shanahan was lucky he didn't get a penalty on that too. I mean, the mark was a clean mark. He rode him into the ground, toppled straight over, over Troy Luff. But anyway, the Swans have got the goal on the scoreboard and they lead by that kick. Struggle for possession around the centre. Chapman, middle hand pass Lewis. Over the top, O'Loughlin. Can run away here, Michael O'Loughlin. Short pass is not bad. Oh, just a little bit too fierce there, perhaps for Troy Luff. He couldn't grasp it. And that is the last play of the first quarter. And at quarter time, the Swans lead 4-4 to 3-4. And boy, wouldn't they love to see that man on the ground and bagging a few goals for them. But an excellent comeback by Sydney when you consider that St Kilda kicked the first three. Sydney has then hit back hard by kicking the next four goals as uh, Normie Goss and Stan Alves make their way out to uh, the St Kilda camp. Certainly the second half of that quarter was very different. Uh, the Swans got control of their ball and uh, the scoreboard started sticking over them. So the fact that Locke is off the field, they're obviously wanting to give him a, a shortened game, the Swans, they'd be pretty comfortable that they've got a goal advantage. Yes, just checking the quarter time score here at Waverley then. It is Sydney leading by one straight kick. 4-4-28, St Kilda 3-4-22. So here we go, second quarter at Waverley with Sydney leading by a straight kick. And a good solid first quarter hit out. It is Nathan Burke leading O'Loughlin and Creswell. He got the kick despite the Creswell tackle. Winmar comes flying through without the football. It's poked wide towards the centre wing. Johnny Stevens is there. He's also on the ground and under plenty of pressure. Throw in is going to take place after Joel Smith, who kicked the goal in the first quarter, made sure that he was going nowhere. Slip sliding away, John Stevens, wasn't he, with those uh, obviously some moulded souls which are under discussion uh, after last Saturday's game out here between St Kilda and Collingwood. Showing your rock and roll age there, Robbo, with one of the classics as Winmar comes inside to Harvey. 
the dynamic duo since and killed a forward down towards Peter Everett. Ruse is at the back. Ruse and Everett. Ruse gives it away to Grant, who gives it to Lewis. They're out of trouble to Dunkley. He goes back again to Dale Lewis, who kicks them clear on the outer side. And it's not a bad kick either. Chapman in front of his opponent and has taken a safe chess mark. 28 plays 22. The Swans lead. The kick into the center. Oh! Oh! Had the absolute sit on Darren Cresswell. And after two grabs, has taken the mark. Close to the centre. Hand pass away from Cripps. Cripps Jeez. back onto his right foot, then kicks it pretty well straight up in the air. And third in line is Dunkley, and he's taken the mark in the left back pocket. Gets the hand pass away to Lewis. Lewis from that position. Kicks out towards the wing, and the mark is taken by Kelly. Away to Chapman. Young, just a little late. But uh, Chapman able to get his kick away. It just bundles and bundles along the boundary line. And eventually over, Jason Daniels arrives just a little late. We'll have another look at Winmar. A fantastic grab. Really a dangerous ball. Whenever you bring the ball from outside back into the centre square uh, to a contest, you're really risking disaster. But really, Winmar made it. Coglin doing the ruck work. Gets it down to Daniels. Daniels just hacks it forward. Well done, Orchard. Just can't get away to get an effective kick. And Ozzie Jones probably to be congratulated for his second effort there. Able to just hold the ball up. It's on centre wing in front of a big crowd here at Waverley. Lots of St Kilda fans, lots of Swans fans. And ground. Russell Morris on the boundary line. Yes, there is a little dew on the grass, actually. That's quite slippery. Some of the players are wearing moulded soles, mainly the Sydney ones, but I think they might be going to screw-ins at half-time, unless it dries up, but I don't think so. There's no breeze, beautiful conditions, but a little dew on the grass. There's a fair bet it'll get dewier rather than the other way around. Sitting in the Weather Bureau, isn't it, really? Dyson pokes it down, but it's taken by Daniels, who gives it to Burke. Nathan Burke defends towards half-back. Cook outpointed on this occasion by his opponent in the big man department, Stafford, who finds Darren Creswell, who goes straight back to Jack Daniels, who's also spent time with both of these clubs. A couple of players in that department tonight. Cook to Burke, St Kilda go up towards the right half forward. Look at that. One hand, the strength. Like a tennis ball. Bucket hands over Stuart Lowe. He puts them inside 50. Oh, the big fly, the bouncing Peter Everett. That's like coming down from a 10-storey building. He's just landed. He's picked himself up. Oh, where am I? Where am I? And that's exactly how he, well, that's exactly what uh, St Kilda need Everett to do a bit more regularly. I mean, when he jumps in the air like that, his height just makes him so hard to spoil. But if he doesn't mark the ball, well, then he becomes a very slow at ground level. So uh, that's the equation. Well, this is happening. Chapman off for Sydney and Peter Philandia comes on in his 50th game. Good luck to him as a behind is registered. Chapman takes the call from the coach's box. 3-5, plays 4-4. So Kevin Dyson uh, with the footy. 28-23, to 23, Swans lead early in the uh, second term. Dyson comes to the member side, grey up high, punched away there by Lowe. Dives on it, O'Loughlin oh. looking for the free kick. The ball spilled out the back, Cresswell, O'Loughlin handled it beautifully. His kick across his left shoulder, gets good meterage and will bounce over in front there of Coughlin. And you can see there the Saints' last goal. Well, they kicked three in the first 13 minutes of the first term and have been goalless since. Cook and Stafford. Real contest there to try and get the front posse. All right, oh. Lachlan, magnificent, and picked off by Kelly. He goes for goal, it'll bounce through. It's a goal, great goal, lead up spectacular. Well done, Swans. Yes, I think this ruck position is the greatest problem St Kilda have. Stafford, really, uh, Stafford versus Cook, really a great uh, knockout from this boundary throw in. It uh, got the ball running to Lachlan and a quick hands to Kelly. And then the open goal square, Shanahan came with the leading luff for a start and then uh, tried to double back, uh, but couldn't make it. Great goal from Paul Kelly. Sydney stretch their lead, 5-4, plays 3-5.
send it bounce again. Stafford floats high, wins it down towards Creswell. Then O'Loughlin, they go charging out of the middle through Dyson. Kevin Dyson looks down into the forward line. Out comes Troy Luff and Jamie Shanahan. Oh, good hand pass. The advantage is going to be paid. Here's another one to O'Brien. That's three to Craig O'Brien. And Sydney running hot. Matthew Young injured Sandy. Went, grabbed his shoulder almost immediately after that marking contest. Yes, got caught underneath the ball and uh, may well have been Shanahan who came flying out to spoil but uh, crashed into his own teammate. But nevertheless, uh, good ground level crumbing by Philandia. Got the ball forward to O'Brien to be the finishing. But uh, the crumbing position for Philandia, front of the pack, good clean hands, got it quickly forward. Well, good to see Matthew Young on his feet anyway. Taking a couple of deep breaths, I think. Might have just had the wind knocked out of his sails in this encounter. But, uh, excellent work by Philandia. Quick mind, get that hand pass forward. Set abouts once again. Uh, St Kilda keen to stop this run. And Harvey gives it to Burke. Pokes it down towards the half forward line. Stuart Lowe gives it to Daniels. He was pressured out of it. Matthew Nix also on all fours and still going. Well done by Nix to find Maxfield. Here goes Peter Philandia. Look out, it's my 50th game and I'm keen for a big one. Well done by Lachlan as he knocks it down. Probably 55 metres from home. Winmar defends, but he's caught. Beautiful tackle. Heat on now as they lock it up on that outer side. Shannon Grant is the one making sure that no one's going anywhere. And Nicky Winmar also picking himself up after that fierce tackle. It was a good quick tackle, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. The Swans play in Maxfield. And just made... Uh, just a little hotter across that half forward line for the Swans, but this is Coglin for the Saints. Kicks across his left shoulder, over the top of Joel Smith. Lewis a little tap on, not quite to the advantage there of Stafford. And it goes over for boundary throw in, right on centre wing, in front of a, a huge contingent of uh, Aussie Rules fans here that have uh, gathered at the Waverley Oval. Saturday night football. Swans lead 40 to 23. Stafford and Cook. And they've kicked the last six goals, Robbo. Yes. Uh, They've done pretty well. Took them a long time to get on the board, but uh, they've played probably the better football so far in the game, particularly in the last five or six minutes. They lead by 17 points to Sydney. Uh, 14 minutes left in the second term. Stafford knocks it forward. Cresswell gets it down to Dyson. Dyson's kicked to full forward. O'Brien and Peckett. O'Brien quickly to his feet. A snapshot coming in close to the line. It is eventually knocked over by Shanahan and it is through for a rush behind. The kick coming in from Mooney and it was pretty close in the finish. 6-5 plays 3-5. Swans lead by 18 points. Matthew Young will bring it back into play for St Kilda. A couple of short options. One is Harvey. He elects to go long towards uh, Burke. Taken, however, by Dyson. Quickly off to the, the dynamic Michael O'Loughlin. He can kick a goal! from here, O'Loughlin, it's high, it's close, but no, it's away to the right. And one behind. A bad kicking uh, option, Nathan Burke, when uh, Stafford, who's much, much taller, uh, can get to, to the fall of the ball to get to the contest, and uh, it would be disastrous if O'Loughlin had kept that on line. Luke Beveridge. Off. And Tony Brown Not for a run. There's Justin Peck. This time it goes to the outer side, opting uh, for the shorter pass. It's OK to Young, who himself is OK after that heavy knock. Just chips it towards uh, half-back. Cook is away, putting it out in front of Cripps. He's going to run into trouble though in the form of Stafford, only as far as uh, centre field. Courage needed there, and it was shown too by Matthew Nix. Creswell will soccer off the ground. Down inside 50 once again. Sydney doing all the attacking. Who's going to be first to recover at the back? It's Nathan Burke. Goes wide towards Winmar. Can't get there in time. And a good, courageous mark. Guess who? Paul Kelly. Fantastic. Yeah, there's two secure players. Looked at the ball. Kelly went for it and marked it. A long way from home. Luff drops back. Moody may come in from the side. Out the back it comes. And it's Troy Gray who decides he'll concede a behind to his old side so the margin is now 20 points and still plugger to have a crack at it tonight 
Cook in the background there and Chapman alongside uh, Big Plugger on the bench at the moment. Kick in by Peckett is uh, all right. Gets to Burke. Burke runs away from the back pocket. Gets out uh, near the defensive 50 metre area, then runs outside that and has another bounce before kicking down towards the wing. And it nearly the mark taken by Cook, but it's going to rebound again. Mooney's kick in towards half forward. Peckett gets back, gathers the ball quite nicely. 43 plays 23. His kick is short. Burke. Gee, they're just fiddling around a little bit, aren't they? The Saints, Harvey's hand pass was a little awkward. Bounced quite nicely there for Cripps. But the umpire's going to ask the ball to be taken all the way back to where Burke has been given a free kick. He kicks it in towards centre-half back. Cripps oh. tackled by Philandia. Gee, it was a good one too. Shanahan back to Cripps. Saints under pressure across half-back. The kick towards low and half-forward. Punched away by Dunkley. Crumbs could be gathered here by Ozzy Jones. Can he control it? No, he can't before it goes over for a boundary throw in between wing and right half forward, favouring St Kilda. Orchard there, matching up with Ozzy Jones. Under 12 minutes left in this first half. Cook, Stafford. Dyson. Towards Mooney at half forward. Use the body nicely. Will play on and can goal. 40 metres out. He shoots towards goal and Sydney are now Jason Mooney gets his first. They've kicked seven straight. Seven goals, seven to St Kilda, 3 5. Just good body work by Mooney to our position, Colton, but it all came from the ruck throw, and this ruck position is absolutely diabolical at the moment. For St Kilda, Stafford's dominating that part of the ground. Uh, Everett in the forward line's got the height, but not the mobility. Cook maybe be a bit more mobile, but certainly hasn't got the height. Uh, this is a real problem in there for St Kilda. So there's the score line, the time remaining, 11 and a half minutes and again St Kilda get beaten for the ruck contest but it's Cripps across his left shoulder towards half forward, Lowe provides the contest, Dunkley just to tackle, Lowe's hand pass not able to break away from the congestion and at centre half forward for St Kilda the umpire will bounce. Tony Brown just uh, going out of picture there, he's on the ground now at the expense of Luke Beveridge so maybe they'll be looking for him to scrounge a goal to just wrest the ascendancy away from the Swans. This is Harvey for St Kilda. He's kicked a full forward, goes through Everett. Pouncy on it, here's a chance now for Trionides. He kicks a simple goal for St Kilda. Gee, there was a good little hand pass came out of the uh, ground level contest. St Kilda get their fourth goal on the scoreboard, but they still trail at 4-5 to 7-7. And it probably came from Robert Harvey uh, rooting the staff at knockout. I mean, that's certainly what the St Kilda small players had to do. But from this uh, goal square flurry of hands, um, to say that St Kilda needed that goal is, of course, an understatement. So the Trionides goal breaks the run of Sydney's seven goal burst and maybe it will steady the Saints down. Burke is going to be free kick for a tackle that was deemed high. He'll kick from the middle. In fact he won't get the hand pass away to the running Matthew Young who puts them towards the 50 and Stewart Lowe. Sense of urgency now by Sakula. That goal may be spurring them on. Low goes long in towards full forward. Plenty of Sydney Swans players there. They should have no trouble through Stafford, Luff and Creswell. They're bringing out of defence. Moving it towards Kelly on centre wing. Gives a little bit of a shove and then he's away. Clever work by Kelly. Gains another 15 metres or so. He knew he had Mooney loose down on the left half forward zone. If he could just get there. Thought he was Eric Cantona. <laughs> no, Cantona did a couple of naughty things, didn't he? Rocket Eid still not looking uh, as though the end of the world is nigh. Neither he should be. Been a good first half by Sydney. Cook, Mooney. Belting it was Coglin. Burke. It's like a steam train. Shannon Grant. Goes wide. Good vision towards Mooney. 
Jason Moody 70 metres out, but he puts him inside 50. O'Brien has been uh, the major goal kicker on the ground at the moment. He's beaten this time by Peckett, who again goes towards uh, the halfback flank. The young brigade, this is Tony Brown, started on the bench, back to Peckett, he goes again. He bounces his way from halfback, almost down to centre wing. Kicks towards a right half forward. Sydney in front, Ruse to Creswell. Luff, back to Creswell. In towards uh, Philandia. The little 50 gamer. Flicks it wide. Sydney doing it in short burst down towards Kelly, who may see it over the line. So a thrown, but it's down to their 50. We've got just under nine minutes remaining, and a slight scratch of the head from Stan the Man. And time for a call. Well, fair enough. I mean, when you get in position of the ball and you go streaming down the ground, it's not much point gathering all that 80 metre each, right? And give it up to the opposition. Yes, it's a rebound game unless you find a, uh, a, a teammate in your field 50. Kelly trying to force it forward. Joel Smith, a handball. A free kick is being picked out, and it looks as though it might be going to St Kilda, is it? Maybe Paid. Smith, the recipient? No, it was paid for Smith being slung to the ground after he disposed of the ball, so the kick's taken where the handball landed. OK, taken by one of the captains of St Kilda, Nathan Burke, gets it away to Cripps. Out wide, Shanahan. Just knocks it on, really, for uh, Young. Young's kick is high. Over the top, Paul, knocked on by Stafford. Cresswell getting some important possessions across half-back. Young should take the mark, and he does on centre wing for the Saints. Looks to play on, then waits to kick into the pocket. Well done, low. Beautiful running provided there by Smith. Smith's kick towards full forward. At the back, Wingmar will go in and get a goal for St Kilda. So the Saints fans, happy about the fact that their team has now kicked the last two goals of the match and they trail by 14 points. Again, the lowy mark, he's almost run out as a forward target, but he marked the ball and then, importantly, played the ball on to, uh, to Smith. Here, but Young doing well across half-back. I think we see here that the Swans defender uh, went third man up. Uh, Winmar's opponent it was a lock on now. He just got caught in the pack. But really, if you leave your uh, coming forward in those circumstances, you've got to make sure the ball is cleared away. Troy Cook has come onto the ground for Sydney, replacing Kevin Dyson. So Lockett, the only one now, still to have a run. 49 plays 35. The Saints close the gap. Oh, Burke copped another high one. And here's Cook in the thick of things as soon as he comes onto the ground. Still going. Big pack develops. Burke's in the thick of things as well. He's a beauty, Nathan Burke. Oh, he's a goer. Eight kicks, eight hand passes, but in the clinches. Just a bulldog, isn't it? No, fantastic. Again, we've got the situation where Stafford has dropped back and Ruse is up the ground. Uh, again, this rotation, the right position is doing well for Swans. Cripps has had 14 kicks and one hand pass, Sandy. Yeah. Plugger still waiting for his turn, just itching to get a run. Orchard down towards the middle. Here's a go for Kelly now. Oh, settle your 50th game with a goal, Peter Palandia! Heavy. He certainly is. Yes, well, the tide of the game had changed a little, and St Kilda, of course, have got the last couple of goals, so that was a, a pretty valuable one. They're still getting more of these midfield balls, I think, the Swans, and uh, pushing it forward. Good knock-on by Mooney. Yeah. Cowley to Philandia. Really good, uh, good composure. You don't have to take possession of the ball to make an effective disposal, as Mooney just showed. And uh, Lockett warming up. Maybe the time is uh, just about right. So we go back to the middle, 35 plays at 55. Shanahan will soccer off the ground, wide to the outer side. Gatherers by Trinides, gets onto his left foot and kicks it in towards half forward. Lewis providing the pressure on uh, Winmar, gathered by Seymour. Little kick by that player will be marked by Ruse. Looks to give the hand pass away, perhaps not favouring Dale Lewis, who had to straighten up and get back onto his left foot and kicks and finds Luff. Luff is still in the defensive half, although about uh, 85 metres from the Saints goal, which he's defending at this present stage. Mark taken by Mooney. Hand pass to Ruse. Ruse quickly up to full foot. Oh, Lachlan out in front. And has taken a good part. 
Chapman on, Maxfield off, still no locker. This is O'Loughlin, Swans lead 55 to 35, he can uh, increase that lead to 26 points with this kick. He just read the ball better, uh, Smith maybe expecting a longer kick but didn't get to the, to the front position, that's where he get to. Quality player Michael O'Loughlin, kicks for goal, straight over the goal up by his head, it's a goal to the Swans. Lachlan has now kicked two goals and joins Craig O'Brien as the other multiple goal scorer for the Swans. O'Brien has kicked three and for St Kilda they're all singles. Joel Smith, Winmar, Lowe, Trionides and Daniels. And then two just a couple of times Mooney's just out position Coblin uh, to mark the ball and to get the ball running forward. They've uh, both resulted in goals to the Swans. Sydney again stretch their lead. Andrew Thompson on the sidelines about to come on for St Kilda. Saints have kicked a couple this term, but it's not enough at the moment. Some aerial work by Ozzie Jones is OK. It finds Trionides back to Brown. Brown looks towards a right half forward. And good mark taken for that. A bit of holding on there going on with Stuart Lowe. And Andrew Dunkley, the player's allowed to go on. Seymour, it was initially who took it. Now this is Dale Lewis. Kick is wide, Thompson is there, he's the player who's just come onto the ground and Paul Roos is quite happy to see that over the line. Jason Hickley kicked goals last week for security, but he hasn't been able to get near the ball tonight. To Seymour has kept him right out of it. Cook having a spell. That's Brent Cook for St Kilda. We've got Troy Cook who's wearing 41 on for Sydney and there he is there. We saw him, this is Tony Brown. Tony Brown is away to the left with his kick for goal. Five six plays nine seven. Harvey's still struggling to get into it. Sandy yeah. three kicks and four hand passes. Lewis to himself. And then to the outer side. Now the target is Troy Luff. He's got the players streaming down the ground. Uses Shannon Grant. He goes towards O'Loughlin, who I think may have slipped, but anyway, play just goes on. It's called play on, no free kick for Landia. Lovely kick to Mooney. Thinks about the hand pass to Kelly, and does he goes. Paul Kelly kicks his second for the quarter. Well, I don't know what's going on out there, John Smith. If he didn't mark the ball second go, which he probably didn't, he was then tackled and taken to the ground. It's one or the other, surely. Yeah, I agree with that, Lee. I, I really don't know why one or the other wasn't paid. Let's see it again. Again, we see it, but it was a good contest by Luff. Knocked the ball forward to Grant coming forward. That part was good. And again, we see the situation here. Two grabs at the ball, but then it was a tackle. Yeah. One or the other, maybe. I don't know. Sometimes you look at the things and you... Uh, a split second, but it seemed to me St Kilda were pretty stiff on that occasion. Yes. Well, there's that just absolute sensational captain of the Swans, Paul Kelly, getting uh, his second goal and the Swans' tenth. That they march forward once again. Mooney has been pretty good around centre half forward. Chapman dispossessed. Cripps, then Young, out wide to Nathan Burke. Burke able to hand pass, set it up now for Brown. Brown trying to get back onto his favourite left foot. He kicks high in towards the half forward area, but Stafford getting back. Just chops it off and takes a good solid mark for the Swans. Kicks across the half back line to Ruse. Ruse just directing traffic. He's kicked towards half forward and bounces in that area. The ball taken by Kelly, shrugs the tackle from Harvey, gets his left foot to it. Out in front of O'Loughlin, the chance for that player to run onto it, but he's dispossessed by Daniels. Gets past O'Brien, hand pass back to Peckett. Peckett across the full back line. This kick has got to be accurate. He's going to maybe go in towards centre half back where a player is on his own. That's Coughlin. Hand pass away to Joel Smith. Tries to get back onto his left and then forced to kick across the centre of the ground. And a terrific mark taken again by Stafford in front of Troy Gray. So the big man having an impact in the last minute and a half as well as his ruck work, of course, and Chapman is marked for the Swans. From the middle of the ground, he kicks towards Mooney. It's a good option because he marked strongly in front of Jamie Shanahan. Been an excellent quarter of football by Sydney to date. Particularly Mooney, whenever you centre half forward, he's uh, getting a bit of the ball, you know you're in the game, and Mooney has had an excellent quarter. Uh, Shanahan is now on to him after 
dispatched uh, Coleman, but uh, been a very, very good quarter for Mooney. They've kicked six goals for the term. One of them so far has come from Mooney. He's looking to make this number two. Kicking from 51 metres, will battle with the distance. It's there, and it's Troy Gray who comes floating in from the side to belt it over the line from behind. 36 players and 68. It's the biggest lead we've seen in the match today. Peckett looks to the pocket, but now goes long. It's OK, finds Thompson. Came on in this second quarter. And from half-back, he kicks towards Stuart Lowe. He's surrounded by Sydney Swans players. Young taken high, not before he gives it to Lowe, who looks in towards half Well, That's good because Trianides can go on there. He goes wide to Justin Peckett, who's a long way down, 53 metres out, in towards full forward. Winmar, Lewis, Trianides, a snap! Goes nowhere. Sydney defence should be able to come away. Chapman and Ezel goes with a kick towards half-back. Only as far as Harvey, still battling to get into the game. He picks it up now. Let's have a look at his elusive skills. 55 metres out, he spears the pass beautifully in towards half forward and Heatley takes the mark. It's almost perseverance by Harvey out here. Didn't really take the ball clearly in the first, second, maybe third attempt, but eventually that ability to uh, sidestep quickly, shook off the uh, swivel of the hip, shook off the uh, Swans play, then a really good finish in the end of Heatley. Golds three to his credit coming into this game from Jason Heatley. Directly in front. A much needed goal this one for St Kilda if he could kick it. He's missed. It's amazing when you're not getting much of the ball when you finally do get a chance. Uh, touch is not there and the uh, kicking goes astray as well. And young Cook being spoken to by the coach. Coaching box anyway. And play goes on. Pickett, hand pass. Try and even tries to get it to Harvey. Harvey runs through and then gets the hand pass wide. This is Coughlin for St Kilda. Coughlin's kicked to the goal front and the mark is taken by Hickley right in front for St Kilda. So surely he must convert here. 68 plays 37. That's a margin of 29 points. He can bring it back to her for St Kilda fans, hopefully, to 23. And Winmar there, just getting his body in next to Lewis, so Lewis couldn't jump. He knew uh, Heatley was there supporting him, and it become a very easy mark once Winmar was able to prevent Lewis jumping at it. So Heatley for his first goal. And the goal umpire runs across, but he's got it. Jason Heatley kicks his first goal for the night, and for the Saints, it is their sixth goal, close to half-time, they trail 6-7-43, Sydney at 10-8-68. Only 30 seconds to go, but Peter Edward has just come back onto the ground to go into the ruck, and he really needs to stand up to be counted. Uh, not high stats for Stafford, here we see a Winmar getting his body next to, uh, to Lewis, good mark for Heatley, but he really needs to stand up and be counted, Edward. First goal to Jason Heatley, his sixth with his new club, Everett, on the ground. Kelly, always working hard. It's socket out towards Young, who couldn't quite take a one-hander. Peckett does some nice twisting and turning. He gives it away to his teammate in Aussie Jones. St Kilda looking to finish uh, in a flurry. Brown's got the opportunity after taking it from Lowe. He runs into trouble. He gives it back to Jones. Aussie Jones, a centering kick. They need a mark, a Winmar or someone like that. Can't take it. Lewis was there. Seymour is there also. Trying it. He's trying to do it on his own. Heatley now gives chase on Lewis, who's quite happy to paddle it towards the line. And he'll be even happier now because the siren has sounded as Heatley comes in to remonstrate with a couple, and he's joined by Nicky Winmar. 
does get the angry pill sometimes. Nicky does it for oh, yes. some unknown news. But that last uh, uh, forward thrust by St Kilda was probably the story of their uh, game. The play was open, looked like they might take, make something of it. But uh, just at this point, Stuart Lowe was their only forward who was really uh, looked like marking the ball in the contest. On the other hand, Craig O'Brien has booted three for Sydney. Paul Kelly has two. Michael O'Loughlin has kicked two. There's Robbo's mate, big bad busting Barry Hall. Leaving the ground. Yet to row with the statistician, Barry Hall. He might have been on and off the ground, but uh, he was trying to steer up Dale Lewis there. I'll tell you if you were watching <laughs> that action. And uh, Nicky Winbar just settling down. It is a half so far that has belonged to Sydney after St Kilda made a very promising start with the three first goals of the match. Sydney have then hit back very hard. In fact, I think it was seven straight they may have kicked before St Kilda was able to answer with three more. So Paul Kelly, Troy Luff and co lead them off. There's Chapman leaving the ground. I must say at the moment you'd be tempted what to do with Lockett. I mean, the Swans are set up. He's going very well. Right? I mean, they want to give Lockett some match practice, but uh, on the way the game is going, you might leave it the way it is. Well, let's see what happens in the second half. At halftime, it is Sydney leading. Sydney at 10-8-68. So Kilda, 6-7, 43. Ground to start the second half. Six goals last week. Week a long time for you, isn't it? Certainly is. So here we go. Second half at Waverley. 43 plays 68 as Sydney leads. Cook does the ruck work. Harvey tries to take it out of the air. He kicks towards a Stuart Lowe. Runs through without the football. This is O'Loughlin. Was in pretty good touch in the first half. Kicked a couple of exciting goals. Bustle towards the boundary line by Shannon Grant and he soccers at another 25 metres, just bouncing it inside the line. Shannon Grant, who turns 20 today, and this is 39th game. It was nearly as good as a kick, wasn't it? He punched it, it forward was, and yeah. kicked it forward. He could ask for no greater birthday present than the four premiership points, I'm sure of that. Mooney, front spot, Cook at the back, gets a bad bounce on a couple of occasions. Dyson flicks it beautifully towards Shannon Grant. Grant spears it in towards half forward. Now there were three Sydney Swans players there, but uh, Craig O'Brien, who's booted three, is the one that's come up with the mark. He hasn't had a lot of the ball, but having his already kicked three goals, and on the lead, uh, again, Peckett really normally plays on the small forward, the leading target player that O'Brien provides is not necessarily hanging out that well. Craig O'Brien for number four. This is a great start for Sydney in the second half. He's got it. Yeah, it's a good finish by O'Brien. Four goals, only had five kicks. Certainly economy of uh, effort, which is what the Swans have been all about. They uh, Certainly their efficiency of scoring from the times they've gone forward has been very good. That's really the main part of the game. And... Uh, O'Brien again a good foil as an alternative, not a not a tall player as we can see, but certainly uh, can lead and find space to give the player up field a target. Pretty good scrounging effort by Craig O'Brien, mentioning that uh, just his fifth kick resulting in his fourth goal. And they lead by 31 points now, Sydney, remembering that the Saints kicked the first three goals of the game. The ball comes forward and a good mark taken by Young. O'Brien just a little late. But uh, Young, OK, and uh, gets to his feet quickly, kicks across the half-back line. The mark is taken by Brown. Brown running outside the defensive 50 area. Kicks in the direction of Lowe. It was a spectacular leap. Too early. Now the advantage is with the Swans, is it? No, it's not. It's coming back. Because uh, O'Loughlin was about to be claimed. And we have another look at that leap of Stuart Lowe. The ball kicked across the half-back line for Sydney and the mark is taken there by Stafford. 74 plays, 43, and it's kicked forward by Orchard towards centre-half forward. Good mark. And done some pretty good things early in the third term as Shannon Grant. Little kick by O'Loughlin. Mark taken by Paul Kelly. Kelly, his 15th possession coming up. He's kicked two goals. So again, a workmanlike performance by the Sydney captain. Worked his way into the game in the second quarter and uh, continuing on now at the start of the third. He's kicking from 50 metres. Gives it a good roost to the square. Knocked away over for a boundary throw-in. 
right forward pocket for the Swans. I saw that situation where Grant outmarked uh, Joel Smith. Sometimes in those situations, Smith just has to push his body in harder to make a tougher contest. Throw in in the right forward pocket. There's Luff, Shanahan, Harvey at the back with Kelly. Shanahan tries to pluck it out of the air. And uh, Winmar who takes it over the line. 75 plays 43. St Kilda are going to get, to get a wriggle on in this quarter. Gee, you wonder what they're going to do, don't you? Yes, yes it's just not working not. for them uh, at the moment. I mean, they're sort of trying hard, but just a bit sloppy with their disposal. Just uh, just not looking like a side that uh, has really got it together tonight, the Saints. Chapman and Grant working hard there for Sydney. There's Troy Gray. Throw in. Coghlan again doing the ruck work. Mooney has been excellent. Belts it over the back. Taken away by Jack Daniels. Gives it to his skipper in Burke. Towards the centre wing. And uh, Dudley comes sliding through. Was that heavily disguised, John? Didn't look so. I mean, Gar Darren Goldsmith would have been trying to figure out what any other intention he had was, and there was no teammate on the outside of him, so uh, he certainly wasn't trying to knock it onto a teammate. It's on centre wing. O'Loughlin takes the hand pass from Creswell, kicks in towards half forward. Mooney and Coughlin both tried to slap it on. Cripps is at the back. He's taken the ground. Mooney recovers. Socket off the ground, however, for St Kilda by Matthew Young. John Stevens leads in the race. Nice one-hand pickup. Now needs help, and he's got it in 50 gamer for Landia. For Landia looks in towards half forward. Troy Love comes steaming up. Peckett is at the back. He's under pressure from O'Brien. Loose it now. Mooney runs into a tackle. And the ball spills free to Peckett. He in turn loses it. An opportunity again for Philandia. Stands up, tries to check side a wobbly old one in towards full forward. And Darren Creswell takes the mark and cops one on the score. So Sydney a chance to extend their lead through Creswell. And a high possession getter as well, Creswell here. Just the ball just dropped a bit short. That little bit extra height by Creswell. Good overhead mark against Nathan Ball. And for Landia, as this is happening, is leaving the ground. Maxfield's going to come on. Creswell though, 20 metres out. Well, it wasn't pretty off the boot, but it was effective. And that's the main thing. He's kicked the goal. Darren Creswell gets his first and Sydney continue to build their lead they're close to doubling St Kilda's score 6-7 plays 12-9 well, I know I've harped on this a bit tonight but the ruck work situation whenever there's been a ball up or a boundary thrown it seems like the Swans have taken the ball away uh, from those type of situations just about every time and uh, that's the area where St Kilda just aren't competing See, I think there was a bit of luck in that too You got the impression there there was maybe a bit of good fortune for the Swans. For Landia, I thought maybe was trying a check side kick and it landed with Cresswell in front of goals. But yeah. uh, away from the centre bounce, O'Loughlin, Shannon Grant dispossessed. Cresswell very good, just forced it into the path of O'Loughlin. Saints defence under pressure, Mooney a little hand pass. Kelly tries to knock it clear. O'Loughlin's handball pretty good. Out wide is Grant. Good finisher, Shannon Grant. Kicks oh. to the front of the goals. No one home. He could have nearly kicked straight at the goals. And it may have even bounced through. Shanahan for St Kilda. Yeah. Kicks over on the full. And that really has been the tail of the night as far as the Saints are concerned. Their performance since the early part of the game has been very, very ordinary. Luff kicks in. Lewis a hand pass. Dunkley, the advantage. They took the free kick, but they'll go on with it. Cresswell off his left foot. Kicks towards centre half forward. Luff the contest. Chapman does well, gets back, and then hand passes into Kelly. Ducks and weaves yes. and crunches it through. Away goes Kelly with the left foot to the goal front, but the mark is taken by Shanahan. Paul Kelly just lamenting the opportunity that he had there. Couldn't quite get the distance. Kicked away by Young. Out wide is low. Gathers it beautifully for a big man. Lewis the tackler. Umpire sees that as all clear and will ask the boundary umpire to throw it in. And once upon a time, if you threw the ball away like that, Johnny, it was a free kick against you. It still is. It's supposed to be. 
So, boundary throw in on centre wing. And the Ruckman Stafford gets his right hand to it. But it's Aussie Jones. Breaks the tackle. Tries to run away from Orchard. Forced to kick with his left foot. Back goes Seymour. A reliable defender now. Really a good player. In a little bit of trouble there was Nix. But he's able to get past. Heatley grabbed him by the jumper. Orchard on in turn onto Seymour. Seymour short. Dyson has it. Playing on at all opportunities are the Swans. Out in front of Luff, which was important. Luff over his left shoulder. Bit of an up and under. Mooney, in trying to make a contest, has given away a free kick. So the free kick will go to Coughlin. It's not a kick. He hand passes to Cripps. And Cripps has a look towards the outer side. St Kilda trying desperately to get down into their forward line. This is Gray. They need gold badly. Stuart Lowe may set something up here. Now he's got the youngster down forward in Joel Smith. Kick one in the first term. 51 metres out. He blazes away at goal and kicks a beauty. Joel has another one. Now just maybe that will be the kick that can kick start St Kilda. Certainly been few and far between the St Kilda goals, but uh, here low again, he's just been the only target and played the ball on. Even Brown there, the ball like the, had to be a stronger handball to allow uh, Smith to run forward with the flight of the ball. But he had to come back, it was good enough to still do the U-turn. Good long 50 metre goal. Well, Plugger has taken the tracksuit off, but the chart at the moment is not for him. It's Joel, Joel, give us a goal. And that's exactly what he did. 49 plays 81. Tony Brown at the bottom. Harvey flicks it out towards Daniels. Jack Daniels comes towards Nathan Burke and also Harvey. It's the latter who takes it to Trianides. Suddenly St Kilda have found new life. 70 metres out. He goes in towards full forward. It's going to be down the ground because Trianides was deck late. Up by having a word to Paul Kelly and it is only a word. This could be a gimme goal to Nicky Winmar. 25 metres out, if that, and only a slight angle. So Kilda have got a couple of quick goals, and no, he's missed it. I'll be blown. And Plugger's on. So Winmar misses one at one end, and listen to the crowd. A mixed reaction. it out wide to the advantage of Dyson Young just a little late not giving away anything Dyson tried a crib and over the top oh. of Lachlan well Gee. Thompson able to knock it away over for a boundary throw 81 plays 50 and the Saints could have done with that goal from Nicky Winmar 12 and a half minutes left in the third quarter Sydney by 31 points and there's Plugger much to the delight of the Sydney fans Maxfield running beautifully steadies and then kicks with the left foot in the direction of big plugger out he comes and crunch down goes a few players gray don't fall on top of him <laughs> gee whiz and pass by daniels just absolutely demoralizes oh, look at this maxfield to the goal front o'brien will get his fifth runs in and kicks it into the crowd so swans with plenty to cheer about o'brien's fifth goal Gives them a 37-point advantage. And midfield turnovers, they absolutely kill you. And I think it was the Daniels hand uh, handball that went behind Coughlin. Here we see here, uh, Gray played it on to Daniels. But then the handball goes to ground. Bad bounce. Coughlin didn't probably play it that well either. But then uh, O'Brien got rewarded, basically, for not chasing out. Uh, but that's what midfield turnovers create. Injury report from Russell Morris on the boundary. Yes, Sandy, uh, the big, bad, bustling Barry Hall has a bruised bone just below his boot around the ankle area. <laughs> I don't believe you. It's not from kicking. You've been working on pros, I'm positive. Harvey out of the middle to Burke. They're missing big, bad, bustling Barry Brown at the moment because this is Tony Brown. Goal! This is the liveliest part of the game. Tony Brown 
gets his first. He answers the Sydney goal, and St Kilda get their eight. Eight eight plays thirteen nine. Well, this is where the challenge has to come. I mean, the uh, Swans have got the good lead, and if St Kilda are to kind of make a contest at this as we get into the final quarter, they have to get a bit closer by three quarter time. Uh, and there, Brown, good long kick. Uh, open goal square, through it goes, but they need another couple of quick ones, uh, the Saints, if they're to be in this game. Tony Brown, the goal kicker for St Kilda. I've just seen our boundary rider, Russell Morris. He's sitting down there with pen and paper in hand, working on more verse. It'll be interesting to see what he can come up with. Harvey tries to take it. Stevens also. Stafford there. Creswell is away. Gives it off to Ruse. Now, will Sydney answer his orchard? On centre wing, does it nicely, comes in board to Creswell, holds it for a long time because he has a look down towards Lockett. You can't keep him out. Got a nickname for Creswell, BP, the quiet achiever. 15 kicks and six hand passes and kicked the goal. And directly in, uh, opposed to Robert Harvey for most of the game, but then uh, Lockett made the space, uh, the lead into space, the ball. Uh, was well directed, well weighted, ran through the line of the kick and a pretty comfortable chest mark. It's going to be kicking from 45 metres, almost directly in front. His first kick in competition for the year. And St Kilda fans just reminding him of his roots. Takes a couple of steps and has missed to the right. Amazing, isn't it? Those cheers for Tony Lockett. They were cheers just a couple of years ago. Peckett's kick in, finds Coglin in the right back pocket, looking to play on. Gray, hand pass in towards centre half back, gathered there by Nathan Burke. Kicks out wide and probably set it up for Dunkley to punch it away, but Joel Smith is there and picks up the crumbs, kicks with the left foot, gets up near the 50 metre line, rules from behind Thompson just years and games of experience at the advantage there kicks it out in front of O'Loughlin O'Loughlin's kick, O'Brien couldn't take the mark, Peckett provides a contest, runs it outside 50, packs it out of the air over on the full free kick to the Swans it's really I mean you sort of knock the ball on in front by hand, those wild kicks off the ground when you're hitting the wall to the boundary, there's a fair chance that they'll go over on the full it's a really a bad choice of option to keep the ball in front of you Orchard for the Swans, goes in short, a little bit too high for Maxfield, knocked away by Young, gathered by Jones, that's throwing the ball, surely. Oh. Let go on by the umpire, Cripps let it go, Orchard gathered it nicely, and then a the little kick out wide, close to the boundary line, O'Brien and Peckett, O'Brien well done, Orchard again, little kick okay, Dyson has taken the mark, not far wide of the centre. Just under 10 minutes remaining in this third term. Maxfield will go with a loping left footer up towards the Lockett territory again. He's a secure player in the hole and able to take the mark. Shanahan tries to get it to Trianides. He's under awful pressure and Cook is down there as well for St Kilda. Do you think Cook knew when that kick was coming in that Plucker was on his way out? <laughs> he knew he was in that part of the ground, but I think he, he kept his, his head up okay, but he really should have taken the mark. So a bounce at half forward. Sydney in attack. Darren Goldspink is the umpire. Mooney twists out of trouble once, then Burke just takes it out of his hands. It's going to be a free kick, I think, to Nathan Burke for a tackle too high. That's right, Sandy. So back it comes. Darren's done the right thing there. I mean, he wasn't to know that it was going to be to advantage. There were lots of Swans players around the ball correct to bring it back. Troy Luff's having a spell on the bench. This is uh, Troy Gray. Goes wide to half back. Well, they're not out of trouble here yet. O'Brien and Young. And it is the former who sees it over the line, making sure that it is going to stay in that forward line. Craig O'Brien's done very well. He's booted five goals. Two of those have come in this term. In fact, four of them have come from this end of the ground. Don't forget, talking footy, Monday nights, Kevin Sheedy. Is the special guest this week. Just check your local guides for details as Stevens sends Sydney in towards half forward, only to see the mark taken by Robert Hart. Hasn't been the normal dominant Robert Harvey that we've come to know. Has picked up 13 possessions. 
finds Shanahan. And the burly Tasmanian kicks high towards a right half forward. But poorly directed straight down the throat of Seymour. Seymour from the oh, left half this. back area kicks to a man on his own near the wing. It's Philandia. Runs on and then gives the hand pass. Player was basically standing still, Cresswell, but it had plenty of time to straighten up and kick towards full forward. Out comes Peckett, missed it altogether. O'Brien a chance. Little hand pass for Orchard. Orchard unselfishly gives it to Plucker. Well, there Same probably spot. is an excuse for a player to blaze away in that situation, but Mark Orchard had good vision, good strength of mind there to kick it to Locker. This was a good finish by Orchard. And again, the Peckett error of overrunning the ball. I mean, you're coming out from goal, you have to keep the ball in front of you, but let the ball get behind him. Well, Plucker, this is his second chance. He's only been on the ground for uh, about five minutes, five or six minutes. And a chance from a similar position just a minute or so ago. So he'll know exactly what to do with it, and he kicks it straight through the centre. Lockett's first goal for season 1997, but it's the 14th on the scoreboard for Sydney, and they lead by 38 points. Well, just the finishing player then, uh, then Lockett. As we see the ball come forward, a hard bouncing ball for uh, Pecker. He got in front of him, that was OK. But kicking a bouncing ball in mid-air is very low percentage stuff, and he paid the price, and St Kilda paid it as well. He's got a great kicking style, hasn't he? Beautiful. Sensational. 56 plays at 94, the lead just grows for Sydney and it's Creswell who rips them out of the middle once again down towards a right half forward with Lockett kicking his first goal, Mooney has been dominant, he's up like a spring heel, Jackie kicks in towards half forward, they've got players streaming everywhere, this is becoming a little too easy, in towards full forward and an opportunity going begging there, one behind a Shannon Graham. 14-11 plays, 8-8, eight, eight, and really he had the goal at his beck. I think he is a good kick of the football, but he just hasn't been able to get that ball spinning in no time, in, has time. He? he did just in time it on that occasion, but yeah, normally a good kick of the ball. Peckett. Keeps it in the pocket. Burke. Really. This is typified much of Kilda's night, the uncertainty. They've gone forward about eight metres, I think, yeah. from the goal line. I reckon you're being generous in saying eight. Well, he contemplated going backwards there. He might run straight into Dale Lewis. Well, this is incredible. That's, he's got to be pinged. He has to be pinged. It is. Hasn't been a good last uh, five minutes for Justin Peckett, but sometimes I mean, if all your men are covered, you just have to kick the ball as far as you can to a tall teammate and at least make it a contest. But uh, no one presenting themselves, and he just got himself into a very bad mess. O'Brien's kick goes right across the face of goal. They had Lockett pretty well covered, and the throw in will take place right forward. But Opponents kick five goals, and I think Peckett would be aware of that. Not that O'Brien's had a heap of the ball, but uh, right at the moment, I think Peckett's confidence would be about as low as they get. From the throw-in, it's won by Mooney, but it's Krebs at the back. The tackling again is very good of Peter Philandia. He bounces up and asks the question. <laughs> <laughs> he said, this is my game. It's my 50th. I'm going to enjoy myself. Sydney dominating in most areas. Kicking department, as we see there this quarter, and the scoreboard. Mooney again, going for a roundhouse blast. O'Loughlin, he could be anything this ball. And he's put that one out on the floor. So just over five minutes of the third quarter remaining. And Robert Harvey and the Saints have got to try and do something. If they're going to get back into this game in the final quarter. It's Daniels who kicks it back in through the arms of Stafford but uh, Maxfield's on the end of the hand pass and he'll just uh, swing it in towards half forward lock it again 
they're doing this with relative ease. Lockett's had three marks since coming onto the ground, a couple of shots at goal, and he's booted one goal one. It looks easy when you just move into space, and obviously it's a good kick, but this is what the good full forward is, just the time of knowing when to go, to be able to get to the space that the kicker can actually kick it to, um, and that, that was sort of like a perfect example of Maxfield coming on his left foot, uh, Lockett just dropped into the space and become a very simple looking pass then Mark. Directly in front, a little further out this time Tony Lockett, he's going to be kicking from probably 52 metres. It's a high drop punt, the distance is there. One behind. One goal two to Plugger. And Sydney moved to 14-12. Margin now of 40 points leaves Stan Alves pondering. Shuffling the deck chairs at the moment. Uh, they just have got nothing going in any part of the ground. Oh, another terrible error. Oh, Robert Harvey yeah. gives it to Stafford. Stafford's left foot kick should be marked nearly by Plugger. Known, punched away. Ozzy Jones there to pick up the crumbs and defend. He's forced to kick with the left. OK, Trionides is on the end of it. He's running up towards the wing, kicks past that position towards half forward, punched away by Ruse. Dunkley it was rather. Heatley, low, oh. you're in strife. Seymour takes him to the ground. Pushed and away go the Swans. No, he said he was pushed. Dyson. The umpire signal pushing the back, Robbo. Very, very fortunate, I would yeah. say. Very, very fortunate. I thought maybe it was play on, but uh, anyway, Stuart low with the kick. In towards full forward. Covers the players there. Winmar, dispossessed by Dale Lewis. He plays a much more disciplined game, doesn't he? Dale Lewis back there across that half-back and full-back line. And he kicks it clear for a boundary throw. And we'll have a look at Lowe. Johnny, looked a that's, pretty good tackle That's from just behind. a fantastic tackle. And that's yeah. not play on. If Lowe's had a prior opportunity, sorry to use the expression again, that is a free kick against Stewie Lowe. Dale Lewis in picture. Sydney lead by 40 points. They're 96. The Saints are 56. They led uh, 68 to 43 at half time. They're going to get away from half back through Shannon Grant. That's a better kick. Oops. And he puts it to Orchard. I thought he might have been off, but he goes back now and he floats it up towards the centre. Leading everywhere this morning. Moody watch. is having a wonderful night. He passes off to Shannon Grant, who looks towards Tony Lockett. Just deft use of the body. A little nudge. And it's like hitting a brick wall. He'll play on unselfishly to Stewie Maxfield, who put one down Lockett's throat just a few minutes ago. I think we saw Lockett the perfect example when you're caught under the ball as Lockett was. It's taking a hard couple of steps back, push the ample backside back, just knock the play off balance, and then it becomes a simple, virtually uncontested mark. But all because Lockett was able to pick the judge in the flight of the ball and actually move backwards a couple of steps to give him the space to mark it. Been on and off the bench, Dewey Maxfield tonight. He's kicking from directly in front and should not miss this kick. There's stoned silence at both ends of the ground, and that's the reason why. That is a terrible miss from directly in front. Fifty-six plays, ninety-seven. Cripps. Bounces his way through half back. Oh dear. Gives it straight to Dyson, who gives it to Cook. Danger here because Orchard will give the hand pass away. They should go in towards the open goal. Oh, Lachlan dummies once. Steadies, chips away a goal and puts it through. Too easy for Sydney. Three goals to Michael O'Loughlin, one in each term so far, and he's having a wonderful night here at Waverley. And I suppose one should concentrate on the positives, which is the Swans, but really this uh, Cripps disposal was probably a fair uh, example, I would say, of just the way uh, the St Kilda defence has just messed around with the ball and just had no idea about bringing the ball out with any certainty. And uh, on the rebound, it was all Swans players in the forward 50, easy goal. Plugger wasn't bad in that passage of play. No, he bumped no. someone out of the road and he also went out and chased someone. 103 plays 56, two minutes left in the third term. Grant, who's had quite a few possessions in this third term. Burke tackled by Nix. The ball comes clear to Brown. Brown's handball is all right. Kick forward by Cook. Just a slightly awkward kicking style. And Paul Ruse allows it to go through for probably not intentionally but uh, slip through his fingers for a behind to St Kilda 8-9 so the margin is uh, 46 points it's a blowout really St Kilda kicked the first three goals of the game 
and it's been all Sydney from there on. Craig O'Brien with five goals and Michael O'Loughlin with three, the leading goal kickers in the match. Beautiful kick by Lewis, gets nearly to the centre of the ground. Kicked out of there by Philandia, but only as far as Cripps. Hurt himself. Cripps quickly on, finds Daniels. Daniels unselfishly to Harvey. Harvey running, running hard, one bounce, gets to 50. Oh. Going to get caught, gives it away to Burke. Burke wider still, Trionides. Doesn't mind this situation, Jason Trionides. And he gets a goal for the Saints. Second goal to Trionides. St Kilda get their ninth, but they still trail badly on the scoreboard. It is a margin of 40 points in favour of Sydney. That's the kind of agility that uh, we've, we've seen from Trionides at times, but not often enough. Uh, Harvey, of course, runs himself into trouble. It's really a quick hand and a quick give by Burke, but just the ability just to uh, evade the tackle. It might have been a... A bad uh, tackling effort by the Swans player, but uh, try and need his good balance to go. Two goals to Jason Trionides, 63 plays, 103. Stafford beaten, but it's Kelly out of the middle. Under no pressure, he spears it in towards Lockett. Now he's had three shots from this very position. And Stan Alves, a couple of weeks ago, described himself as being sick in the guts after his team's performance in Brisbane. I don't think he'd be feeling 100% at the moment either. Lockett is going to shoot for his second. And he's an 1131st goal in his career. A study in concentration. Kicking from 47 metres. A high drop punt. He's a wonderful kick for goal. Copy book football uh, coming from uh, Paul Kelly, who probably had a, a quiet first part of the game, but it's just really from second quarter on, we've just got a heap of the ball. But again, this centre bounce clearance ran forward out of the centre bounce, read the ball off the Ruckman's hands, and then really just into the space that Lockett was leading into. Good mark, good kick. I said, look simple, but the timing to time the lead to get to the right space, Lockett just does it so well. So two goals now to Lockett after coming on the ground look about eight Moon. minutes ago. And Mooney down from the ruck contest. Cresswell over the top of his head. Once upon a time, that used to be deemed as a throw. It's been called as a throw, Robo. Now the advantage is with St Kilda. Nathan Burke's kicked to half forward. Low. Just oh. looks as though he telegraphs most things. Stuart Low. It's a little bit too obvious. No unpredictability about what he's doing at centre half forward at all. And the Swans look, even this big guy in the back line, just making it look so easy. Stafford, terrific mark this time by Low. Jumping and leaping, and now the hand pass to Harvey, to Burke, and then when it builds up, it's chopped off by the siren. And at three-quarter time, the Swans have what you would think is an unbeatable lead. They are 16-13-109, St Kilda 9-9-63. Doesn't happen that way. <laughs> St Kilda going forward, long, long way behind, and the siren goes when they've got a goal-scoring opportunity. It's just been indicative of the night that uh, St Kilda have had. The Swans really from... Uh, about the 10 minute mark of the first quarter have really just pretty much dominated the game. Yes, but for the second successive quarter it's been a six goal blast for Rocket Eads Sydney side and they have careered away to a commanding lead. Six goals, five. They booted in that third term and restricted St Kilda to three goals, two. Lockett coming onto the ground and kicking two goals in the third quarter. Sydney are looking to be big winners here at Waverley tonight. Next week, uh, they'll be here at this very ground again, up against Hawthorne. That's going to be a battle royal for them. So, just repeating the three-quarter time score here at Waverley, it is Sydney 16-13-109, St Kilda 9-9-63. Final term then at Waverley. Sydney certainly in the box seat to go on and record a big win, 109-63. to Unless St Kilda can really pull out the goods in this final term. It's Harvey who goes down towards half forward. But uh, again, the stumbling block is there. And a good mark taken by Seymour. Plays off towards Ruse. Paul Ruse comes back towards Cook who's on the ground now. He'll bounce along that centre wing and away he goes. Has a look inside 50. Goes long towards Lockett who comes from the back of the pack. 
Cook's followed it down. He's still inside 50. Gives the hand pass across to big man Stafford. Oh, he dodges and he weaves, he twists and he turns and he gets the hand pass out. This is Orchard. Gives a little ground to try and set something up. Comes to Shannon Grant. He goes towards O'Loughlin. Pinpoint accuracy. Almost found him. Philandia is playing his 50th. Got into trouble in the third term. Appeared to be injured, but he's okay. Well, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt, but his kick wasn't too flash on that occasion. It's a little disappointing, wasn't it, by Peter Philandia. He's a busy little beaver. Seven kicks, four hand passes, four tackles, and he's kicked a goal. 109 plays, 63 early in the last quarter of this match at Waverley between the Saints, who beat Collingwood in a, what was uh, apparently a very, very good game last week here at Waverley, but they've just been thrashed by the Swans tonight. Cripps from between full-back and centre-half-back. Cook stands his ground. Cresswell and Burke spills to Ruse. Ruse out wide. Lewis doesn't mind this situation. Kicks into the pocket and puts it on the chest of Mooney. He's been good, hasn't he, Mooney? Been terrific, Jason Mooney. 12 kicks, 8 marks, 6 hand passes. He's kicked a goal. And he'll kick from just inside 50 metres. He'll put it to the front of the square. Up there is Lockett. And he nearly got it. Lockett will get the goal anyway. He's kicked four. So big plugger not quite able to grasp the ball at the second opportunity, but O'Loughlin to pick up the crumbs and gets the 17th goal for Sydney. It seems like uh, the crumbing players of uh, the Swans, whenever the ball has come off a uh, pack, you see here, it was O'Loughlin made the effort to get there. Young basically just watched the contest, almost expecting that uh, Lockett was going to mark the ball. And uh, that crumbing spot, front of the pack, and that's where it went. 115 plays 63. Everett gets a hand to it from the centre. Gore oh, Cook goes in with a lovely bump. Opens the door for Kelly. And away comes Captain Courageous. Long penetrating kick towards Lockett. Great use of the body. The juggler! <laughs> I think you're thinking of Nurse Ratchet. This is Lockett in the pocket. chance to kick his third. Came on in the third quarter. In fact, he's going to go short, unselfish. Orchard has an improved angle, but is a similar distance out. Now if you'd back plugger to kick 100 goals, you'd be pretty unhappy with a couple of those passes to players yeah. in better positions, wouldn't you? Here's Orchard. Well, maybe they haven't finished yet. They've got it down to Ruse. Gee, where's he come from? Up the other end of the ground. Oh, he's covered 180 metres, hasn't he, yeah. to get there? But, of course, he's kicked plenty of goals in his career. And one so far tonight. That was back in the first term. Well, they're getting there ever so slowly. And it might finish up with Plugger yet, Lee. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> He's not out of it. <laughs> Here's Mooney. He's still on a very tight angle. Just about where Plugger had it the first yeah. time, isn't it? Uh, will he go wide to Craig O'Brien? One wonders. I think he might have a shot. If it, it could cap off his night, but it won't. He's pulled that to the right and behind as the result. But Sydney are cruising at the moment. 17-14 and Rocket will retain all that hair on his head after tonight's performance there's no worry about that yes 116 plays 63 a 53 point advantage for the Swans as Robert Harvey prepares to kick back into play and he finds Joel Smith Smith oh. uh, just it's just all telegraph stuff there by St Kilda not clear by Coglin, and there really didn't look to be too much disguise about that either Oh, I think that would have been very tough to call that one as deliberate out of bounds. It, it gained a bit of ground for them. He had teammates in the area. The umpire would have given him the benefit of the doubt, and that was fair enough. OK, uh, Everett to do the ruck work. Up against Mooney. Mooney giving away a little bit of a height advantage. Everett in front. Chance here for Burke. Back to Harvey. Harvey running just inside the 50-metre defensive area. Kicks Thompson, dispossessed by Dyson. Thompson still a chance, but Cook lively, very lively. Away to Maxfield. Maxfield to the pocket. Up goes Kelly from behind. Cook and Mark gets the kick away oh. and hits the post. That would have been the goal of the night if it had gone through. 
Paul <laughs> Kelly. Two goals, one against his name, and impressive stats along with that 16 kicks and four hand passes and three marks. Cripps comes away. And again, typical of St Kilda's night. Straight over the boundary line on centre one. It's a real demoralised looking team, St Kilda. I mean, you can see the players are really exasperated with each other because just nothing's going right. There's just so much uncertainty in their play. It's a very ordinary situation out there at present. Crowd of 35,061, many of them St Kilda supporters, and they would be bitterly disappointed with what they're seeing tonight. Joel Smith gets the hand pass out towards Robert Harvey. Harvey looks up towards the 50 metre line. Goals have been like diamonds for St Kilda. Very hard to come by. Maxfield would like to get the hand pass away. There's a left footer predominantly, and it's over the line. A team well, playing like this league, following like they are, they always look as though they're half disinterested. Well, they, they do. It was interesting. I mean, they had a bad game against uh, Brisbane. The team meetings and all that stuff followed that, and a spirited effort against Collingwood. This really looks like the week after the performance, you know, the back to the normal normal level. I mean, they started well, as we know, kicked the first three goals, and things were looking pretty good at that point. But, gee, after that, it's just gone completely amiss. And next week, they've got a journey to Subiaco for Fremantle. So, uh, going to be tough for St Kilda. In that rubber centre wing towards O'Loughlin, he's one of the excitement machines of the game, and he may get a chance to run here. He suckers it off the ground, goes inside 50 once more for Sydney, and another throw in. Why doesn't a dirty rotten little oval ball go where you want to <laughs> kick it to? Eh? <laughs> because it's an oval ball, <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? How unpredictable yeah. it is. That's the game, right forward pocket. Luff spent a little bit of time on the bench. Everett straight down the throat of Cook who gives it to O'Loughlin who bends it round his body and it'll be thrown in in the right forward pocket. Darren Creswell is there. Sandy, we saw uh, uh, young uh, Troy Cook play his first game last week and the similarities between he and Derry Kickett are absolutely amazing, aren't they? It's the haircut. Oh, they're and both, the way he moves. Yeah, it's both just highly skilled and great movers. Speaking of great movers, Cook runs into Harvey, bounces off. Gee, Cook, he's up and he goes again. Kelly keeps it in play. Oh, Lachlan, did that come off his boot? No, says the, the umpire. We'll throw it in. Hand off his hand. So, Michael O'Loughlin. Hands on hips. But uh, he's been OK tonight. 15 kicks, six hand passes. Sydney bench look on. Stevens having a spell. Troy Luff, a stab, but it's wide. It's out on the full. Paul Kelly let him know he wasn't happy with the kick. And really what Sting was in this game has sadly disappeared from a St Kilda point of view. Harvey goes long towards the centre wing. Everett slaps it with the right hand. It's going to be kept in play. Goes over the head of Luff. The kick coming from uh, Aussie Jones. May go back to Jones again. He keeps it in play but his handball is loose. Dyson locks it up. Everett has a, a somewhat of a soccer towards Stuart Lowe, who's ridden into the ground. And again, the umpire comes in to take charge of proceedings. Stewie is assisted. He kicked a goal in the first quarter tonight. And that has been his tally to date. Everett straight to Stewie Maxfield who gets a second attempt to slap it with his fist down towards uh, centre wing. Look at that! Oh, tough! The only one left standing was Cripps. Goes short. It's OK. Right. By the youngster in Tony Brown. He also started on the bench. Brown plays on now. Goes in towards half forward. Nathan Burke. Strong mark. He's just a fantastic player in that killed a jumper. Nathan Burke gets the handball to Joel Smith. Smith's kicked towards the goal front. Chance for Winmar. He's going to kick a goal, I would suggest. Just kicked it out of the hands of his Swans opponent for a goal. Two goals to Winmar, and by gee, it's been a struggle for St Kilda's tenth goal. 13 minutes to go in the final term. They trail 10-9 to 17-15. It was just really uh, pushing the ball forward. There was not much certainty. Uh, Nathan Burt was a good mark from the front position. Then he at least got the ball running quickly. And uh, Smith ran and drove the ball to the goal square. It was really a question of what happened here. Uh, the ball went to the pack. Winmar was the one who was just able to get the little soccer in. But uh, 
that's been uh, those kind of goals so good are not setting him up to bounce back at the center everett gets it down to harvey well they might put some respectability on the scoreboard yet and the kick nearly taken there by hickley but uh, locked up by the gang tackling of seymour and nix and umpire darren goldspink will bounce about 47 meters from the st kilda goal they trail by exactly eight goals out of the road boys and a bit of space to bounce this ball two schoolboys lining up at the front isn't it yeah <laughs> but it's incredible <laughs> the bounce probably favored peter everett it goes towards the saints goal but it's gathered by dyson the handball out wide will set up a chance here for cresswell cresswell goes further afield to grant grant is at left half back kicks past the wing in the direction of luff out in front there of Cook, and he takes a safe chest mark. Troy Luff looking to play on. Runs around. The mark probably not as diligently marked as it could have been. Young tries to hack it out of there, but uh, good work by the Swans forwards there to just hold it up. It's not quite up to the 50-metre line. We'll have a look at Nicky Winmar, who looked as though he hurt himself kicking that goal. Ooh, taken to the ground there by Dale Lewis's tackle. He got up a little gingerly from that. But uh, looks as though he's okay. The Swans have swung a change from their interchange bench as Cresswell goes after the footy, gets it to Troy Cook, goes after it again, tries to get it clear, but only Nathan Burton is there to crumb for St Kilda. His kick towards the wing, Trionides and Nicks, and the ball over for a throw in. 1 1 7 plays 69, time ticking away, and the Saints fans, you would think, uh, left lamenting here tonight. I'm sure they came with the. Uh, thoughts that their team could win this match but uh, they're suffering a, a very very big defeat at this stage Everett and Stafford again Shannon Grant towards the boundary line trying to his uh, does keep it in towards the beverage they've got an opportunity now going in towards the centre half four around the body goes Joel Smith he's kicked a couple of goals at the, the other end of the ground at the defence of Sydney is Dunkley Seymour Cook sees that kick from that player go over the line. Is it super critical of Joel Smith to say going back on the right was too predictable? Maybe when he gathered the ball to cut back, back on the left and throw him out? Well, he made that decision. I think it's when your confidence is down, as is with the St Kilda players, they're hurrying everything really and uh, you know really forcing themselves into uh, and getting under even more pressure than they were actually under. Everett and Stafford again contesting, push towards uh, Philandia and Thompson and over the line. I say the player mentioned before, Peter Everett has had uh, three kicks, and I think one of those might have been a kick off the ground. Don't he take that one big mark? But uh, I mean, he's a ruckman size, but he seems so left handed. He only ever seems to go for the ball with his left hand. And he, uh, he's, uh, I think, almost uh, an example of the whole secure side. Can be very good on his day, but can really struggle on the ordinary days. Daniels wins it towards Brown. Socket away from him for the moment. Now Stevens gives it towards Cook. Oh, here's little Peter Philandia. Hi ho, away we go. And he does in towards Tony. Look at Marks, 25 out. As Robbo would say, plastering a pugnacious perfect plugger. At the moment, the two uh, Coglin is on, uh, Lockett Shanahan is on interchange. So this for number three for Lockett, bearing in mind he didn't come on until early in the third quarter. He's kicked a couple of behinds, that looks pretty good. Sydney, march on. One twenty-three plays 69, a smiling Tony Lockett says, hey, it's good to be back. Yes, I just wonder how the uh, Swans were really intending to use Lockett pre-game. We obviously know he didn't come on until halfway through the third quarter, but uh, Swans were well in control of the game at that uh, at that point. Uh, but again, he just knows where to go, apart from his ball skills, just knows the correct space to move to, to receive the teammates kick from up field. Probably one of the best kicks for goal since uh, Peter McKenna, McKenna when uh, McKenna was kicking heaps and heaps of goals for Collingwood. I think everyone thought that he was a terrific kick, but uh, gee, plugger, he's just so balanced. Kelly 
Still going hard this. football in the lock of direction. Luff together. And a good little kick. O'Brien's going to swoop on it. Well, Craig O'Brien has kicked five goals from seven kicks. Six from eight, it'd be a good night, wouldn't it, for O'Brien? This is not a bad little kick here by Luffy. Just pulled it back a little bit. I thought it may have been meant for Stevens, but uh, O'Brien chipping in. And we'll kick from about 35 metres. Not much of an angle. Goal umpire goes across, and uh, Craig O'Brien disappointed. Registers are behind. Five goals, one, and... Coming off the ground is O'Loughlin. St Kilda Box looking uh, just uh, very disconsolate. The kick in has been marked by Jason Heatley. Plays on and kicks it into the centre. Taken by Harvey. Hand pass to Brown. Maxfield still running and chasing, which is what you'd expect. Harvey kicks towards full forward. A wobbly punt kick. Beveridge in front, punched away, just beats Everett, but he's going to get another chance. Handball not too bad. Troy Gray round onto his left. Ah, smothered. Little kick smothered brilliantly. Cook back into it again. It allows you the Swans defenders. They're working very hard. Dunkley to Ruse. Beveridge still there. Cook. Beveridge can't break away. Lewis is there for the Swans, and it's locked up 55 metres from the St Kilda goal. And you said he reminded you of Derek Kicker, but when you see him smother like that, dead set like Derek Kicker. Yes, I think he's an exciting uh, prospect. There's the score line and the time remaining. Ruck contest just outside 50 metres. Opportunity for Beveridge. Run down by Cook. Very, very good tackle. And he's rewarded with the free kick. Very quick reactions, isn't he? Just really quick off the mark. Great acceleration. Yeah. We see Luke Beveridge has a prior opportunity, again, to get rid of the footy. Tackled. He must kick or handball. Didn't do either, penalised for incorrect disposal. So Cook goes from the back pocket, drifting it towards uh, Shannon Grant. Got a hand to it, unable to complete the mark. Harvey, those popping legs go in towards half forward once again. The pass is okay to Heatley. And he'll have a shot. Jason Heatley kicked a goal in the second term, his sixth since joining St Kilda. See if he can finish off the good work from Harvey. Good looking kick for goal, and he's put it through. So Heatley gets his second. Both kicked at that end of the ground. And, uh, St Kilda record their 11th, but they're 11 9, trailing Sydney sadly 18 16. A good use of the ball by Harvey on this occasion. The good, the, the spoil back, the quick hands from Brown, and Harvey was just. Uh, Saw Hootley just standing in that uh, vacant space. It was a good finish. Five goals last week, uh, two tonight. Just hasn't been able to get too much of the ball as, as most of his security teammates. Nathan Burks, perhaps being their most prolific ball winner. 18 16, plays 11 9. Everett over the top towards Daniels. Kilda looking to finish in a flurry, but Andrew Dunkley may have second thoughts. Drops it from a fair height onto the boot to the running Paul Ruse. Ruse looks further down the ground. They've got runners streaming forward. Troy Luff couldn't quite take it on the half volley. Cook swings around, kicks back towards its centre wing. And look at Kelly go! Catch me if you can, he says. Gets an awful bounce from that oval ball, but then is able to recover. The pass was not a good one. It was meant for Tony Lockett, but it's going to be Peckett who tidies up for St Kilda. Away he goes on the outer side. The sweeping hand pass to Joel Smith, and St Kilda maybe can set up something for Daniels. The hand pass slightly proppy. Smith goes back to Peckett. He's got Daniels running and uses him now. In towards the centre. There's Tony Brown in that area. He's still going down. This is Thompson. Inside 50 now. St Kilda look towards Winmar. Cook, the defender, gets them out of trouble. Here's Creswell, Philandia, from one end of the ground to the other. That's going to be chopped off by Ozzy Jones. Ozzy Jones, he's been uh, a little quiet. His kick finds Harvey. And you would have thought Harvey may have had a reasonably quiet night, but he's coming up for possession number 29. 
Kicks in short, looks for low. Chipping in was Philandia. Terrific stuff from a little bloke when you're confronted by a fella twice as big as you. Dunkley hand pass. Orchard backs away from Prionides and then kicks short. Okay, they keep possession. Luff. Most players have just stopped. Nix into the centre. Kelly hasn't stopped. He just keeps pumping, this Paul Kelly. Kicks in the direction of full forward. Lockett at the back. Recovery pretty good. Gets around onto his right foot. Looking to give it off. Short pass into the path of Cresswell. Cresswell can cap off a brilliant game with a goal, but he misses to the left. Cresswell, 20 kicks, 13 hand passes, and one goal. Troy Gray takes his place on the bench as Young kicks to himself and then runs away from the fullback area. Kicks towards centre wing. Taken nicely down there by Coblin. 125 plays 75, the margin 50 points in favour of the Swans. Four and three quarter minutes left in the game. He goes short to Tony Brown, almost down to the centre. Brown towards half forward because Cook had drifted down there. Off to Peckett, who kicks straight into the man on the mark, and we'll have to go again. Justin Peckett again kicks into the man on the mark. But good smothering work, great defence from Sydney. Try and he tries somehow to get through. Peckett just uh, almost thrown out by Cripps, taken by Jones in towards half forward. This is Ruse. His hand pass goes astray, but they've got the numbers there. Seymour heads for the boundary line. So a throw in in St Kilda's attacking zone. Paul Ruse and the Sydney Swans just a couple of minutes away from recording an excellent victory. Prior to this game it was uh, pretty much a line ball and even money as to who would uh, take out this clash. But Paul Kelly and his commandos have stood up strong. Here's Matthew Young beating Chapman. Stevens, however, almost throws it out to Ruse. He doesn't mind that. Goes down towards Troy Luff. It's only got a Sydney's in business. Gets around Cook at the second attempt. Then floats a high kick. Difficult one for Lockett to try and mark. Thompson comes in over the top, as does Peckett. And just the icing on the cake there, Tony Lockett. How would you like that if you're at the bottom? Four floors up, T Lockett. You wouldn't mind coaching a side uh, Lee with uh, 20 Paul Kellys, would you? No, he just the, the stronger, the longer the game has gone, the stronger he's got, and he's just he obviously always just runs so hard at the ball. Sometimes looks like he's the only player who wants it. Inside 50, Cripps defends for St Kilda. This bloke's played fair. Yeah, I was going to say he's just a really safe defender. Seymour well, doesn't get real high stats, but always seems to do the right thing. Ruse to Orchard. And his elusive skills were very good. Now he's got a player wide here and he can use it. This is Nix. He's got time to steady towards Luff, who comes out on a long lead. Well clear. He marked inside 50 metres. In fact, we'll be kicking from 45 on a 45 degree angle. Was Orchard highly rated at Collingwood? Well, he was quick. I mean, he was just—he he played a few senior games last year and played it in the tagging roles and did uh, reasonably well without looking like he was, you know, in the new piece of the team. But what he is is very quick, and actually, he's uh, he's played pretty well for Sydney in the games I've seen this year. Luff shooting for his first goal for the night. In towards full forward, over the back it goes, and behind is registered. Imagine that Rodney Eade would be quite happy with Tony Lockett having played just a half of football or under a half to come through unscathed. I would think how he pulls up is going to be yeah, important. Yeah, very important, but uh, at least to get a run and not have to play out a full game is certainly a major bonus. Everett's kick goes down towards Burke at full forward. He should go over the top and Lowe should go. So Stuart Lowe finishes with his second goal.
Two goals to low, 12 to St Kilda. They're 12-9 to Sydney's 18-18. And Peter Everett, the link man in uh, lit, uh, midfield here. Uh, Burke didn't quite mark it, but the ground level recovery was good enough to get the ball over to, to Lowry. But uh, I must say, I've been on Everett's case a little bit tonight. I think his ruck work in the last quarter has been probably the best uh, of the St Kilda ruck work tonight. And really a play of his size has to really be a ruckman. So not long remaining in the match. Chapman tries to get it clear. Stevens, but it goes back to Brown of St Kilda. Brown's kick will be marked and just sprinting away. Dale Lewis from half back, kicks to half forward. Lockett makes it his own, but not quite able to gather. And the spilled ball kicked away by Coglin for a boundary throw in about 65 metres around from the Swan's goal, maybe a, a little further away than that. I was going to say, what I mean by that by Everett, I mean, when you're six foot nine, that kind of size, I mean, you're really just not going to make a living as a key forward. You've got to be able to make a living as a right man, in my opinion. Well, he got to the front there, but uh, not able to control it. This is Stevens for the Swans. An awkward kick floating through the air. Coglin uh, didn't seem to uh, get any beam on that at all. Glenn Coglin, the ball bouncing over for a throw in left forward pocket for Sydney. A minute left, the Swans by 45 points. Stre Leading goal kicker is O'Brien with five and O'Loughlin for the Swans has kicked four. Stretcher on, Robert. Matthew Young is, I think, gone down there in the centre of the ground. Had a bad night, hasn't he? He was hit heavily earlier when yeah. uh, he was backing back into a pack and uh, a couple of, I think it might have been Jamie Shanahan that came crashing out yeah, to try and right, punch the ball right. away and he jumped into him and looked as though he may have been hurt then but well, it's, uh, just caps off St Kilda's night really one of their players stretched it off with a minute to go St Kilda next week having to play for Mantle and Subiaco make the trip across the Nullarbor so Troy Gray comes in back onto the ground for the last 62 seconds. The Saints, who I think you mentioned early, Lee, that uh, Stuart Lowe was a goal kicker for them last year, they've only been able to get two goals out of five players. Yes, well, I was at the last week, Heatley kicked five, Everett kicked six. Well, uh, Heatley's got his couple tonight. Everett hasn't really got into the goal-scoring uh, states. And uh, um, Lowe, he's played well, but played up the ground at centre-half forward and hasn't really uh, been uh, too much uh, value in the goal-scoring area. Winmar has been very quiet with seven kicks and four hand passes and kicked two goals. Yes, it hasn't been uh, one of the vintage Winmar performances. Uh, you know, 10 or 11 possessions for uh, player midfielder of Winmar's cal uh, calibre is good enough. He's been played in those permanent four at times just to try and get some goals on the board of secure as the match is uh, real on. Well, the umpire will give the all clear for play to resume in the left forward pocket for the Swans. It's knocked down for Landia. <laughs> well, it has got a score for the Swans. He's just an <laughs> effervescent type, isn't he, Peter Philandia? The little legs just never stop pumping. 12-9, plays 18-19. The kick in has been marked by Harvey. Harvey kicks forward. Taken there by Heatley. The clock ticking down. Heatley has the footy and kicks it out wide. But it's a two-on-one situation that favours the Swans. Winmar outpointed clearly there by Paul Ruse. And Ruse has got the footy for the Swans at right half back. Goes short. Maxfield has taken the mark. 127 plays 81. A 46-point margin in favour of the Swans. O'Brien five goals, O'Loughlin four, Lockett has kicked three. And for St Kilda, as I mentioned just a moment ago, five players have kicked two goals each. Punched away. Kicked forward again there by Kelly in the direction of O'Brien. A good contest there. Brown, handball over the top. Heatley's a chance. Hand passes away to Thompson. And the siren sounds to end the misery. For the St Kilda supporters, Rodney Eade would have a bit of pleasure out of that, I'm sure. 
Craig O'Brien shaking hands with Justin Peckett, the leading goal scorer on the ground. And the scoreboard shows that the Swans have had a big victory. They've kicked 18, 19, 127, defeating St Kilda by 46 points. The Saints 12, 9, 81.